Hey guys, I'm Shark, and in today's video, we will be doing the Ultimate Advanced Biz Guide for Season 12, where we'll be going over everything from the best combos to win the laning phase and stomp team fights, summoner spells, build options, rune options, how to perfectly play the early, mid, and late game, what place to look for, a dedicated low elo section to help you climb out, how to not get outscaled, how to translate your leads, a range lane matchup guide, and we'll be covering over how to win every single laning phase matchup. So yeah, we basically cover everything here. Whatever your goal may be, whether that's gold at the end of the season, platinum, diamond, and beyond, by the end of this, you'll have the knowledge to snowball your games out of control. I'm giving all the information I've learned playing Fizz for six years plus now, and you'll be learning from a near challenger level. So like usual guys, please smash the like button for all the time spent, comment for the algorithm, and subscribe to see more like this in the future. So why is Fizz strong this season? Or at least like, what are his pros? Well, if you're low elo, as we all know, Fizz is an assassin, which means he's good at fighting and one-shotting squishy targets. You're going to get a lead in lane, which I'll show you examples of how to do later within this guide. You'll be able to stomp games out of control. After you get that small lead, you'll be able to influence jungle pressure, taking all objectives possible, and roaming bot or top, whichever side you choose, and just controlling the pace of the game. Your 2v2s are really strong, so if you're paired up with a Lee Sin, uh, oh man. Rek'Sai, uh, Elise, uh, Xin Zhao, all these champions, I mean Fizz pairs up really well with Nicely since he wants to be looking for those 2v2 fights, he wants to be looking for that chaotic type scene, and well, just being in every fight since, well, that's what he's good at, it's that scrimmaging. Once he gets a lead, he's very versatile in the way he can play these fights with his shark, he could either use his shark to peel for his backline if they're fed, or just go the traditional assassin route and come from a flank, the side of the fight, and just one shot their squishy targets, whether that's their ADC, their control mage mid, or whatever target that may be. You don't have to worry about getting counterpicked up until diamond one plus, because there's always a way to win the game even if the lane matchup isn't favorable, and you're always going to see mistakes in low elo, so you just have to know what to look for in order to win lane. But in the higher ranks, Fizz is still impactful and just likes chaotic games where there's always fighting 24-7. Alright, so now to run over Fizz's abilities really quickly. So his passive, there's basically nothing you can do with it. Mechanically, Fizz is ghosted, he can walk through people and minions really easily without getting creep blocked and he takes reduced damage from all sources. Fizz's Q Urchin Strike is an ability where you can use to both engage or disengage because you can start off trades with your E. I'll go more in depth in this in a minute but it's both a tool you can use to engage onto your opponent or disengage. It's also your mobility and lane you could dodge skill shots with and well it's on a low cooldown and its mana cost is really low. There's two parts to Fizz's E. There's his passive which they take bleed damage over three seconds every time you auto attack and the second part it's active is an auto reset. So it makes your second auto attack quicker and if you kill the minion or monster with it it refunds some of your mana. There's two versions to Fizz's E. There's the one where you naturally let yourself flop down, dealing an AoE slow, along with that AoE damage, and there's the second part of it, where you double cast it. it deals the same damage, but in a smaller radius. And typically in lane, you're gonna be using double E anyway, since you don't need the slow from it. You just want quick bursty trades, unless it's an all-in. There's three versions to Fizz's R. I believe the names are Gumby, Chumby, and Megalodon. Basically, the further it goes, the more damage it does, the bigger the AoE it is. Yeah. And the more damage it does. If you get a Megalodon in team fights, it isolates that target. So if somehow you're able to get a Megalodon within a team fight, it pushes all the targets away so you can really focus them. But typically, it's going to be a tier 2 shark since. Realistically, that's harder to flash or gale force away from. Now to talk for combos within the lane. So, the simple combo, especially when you're playing against melees, is you're going to be CSing when they walk up for a minion, auto W. That's how you utilize how your second auto is uh, auto cancellation and it deals a little bit of burst. But that's very situational since you can pretty much only do it against melees. Typically, the best combos to take and the ones that do the most damage are the ones where you start off with Q. But against mages, especially when you just want to get them to lower HPs before you look for the all-in. When they step up for a minion, especially, you're going to 
double cast your E, auto W, and then Q out. So yeah, that's basically it. It's double E, auto W, and then Q out. That right there will just take down their HP. And especially if you have Corrupting Potion compared to their Duran Ring, it really uh, speeds up the lane and it makes them in a vulnerable spot to get all in or uh, Tower Dove, yeah. Typically, when you start off with your Q, it's Q, auto W, into E, auto, auto, and you're going to finish that trade off with a Q since your Q has a four second cooldown. Those are like the standard trades you want to take. Those are the long trades. And especially against, if you're able to get into Q range, the mages that don't have a lot of things to fight you back with early game. And yeah, I mean, even melees, this is what you do. It's, it's a really solid trade and it takes down the majority of their HP. Auto, auto, and especially if you're playing against mages, pretend like you're walking away, but your Q's back up. It's on like a six or seven second cooldown. So while they're chasing you, you can just Q re-engage. And they won't expect it. I'll show you examples of that later on too. Your one shot combo. This is the one, especially towards that uh, level six to level eight mark. You're probably going to do because this deals the most damage. It's R, E, auto, W, Q, R from whatever range that me. And then you pair that up with ignite. And you can probably just still chase them down the long lane. Since your R provides a slow and a knock up. So... Those are your two things to have stick potential. And then the quick one shot combo is basically just this is like within a team fight setting. And you just like as soon as you make that burst off, you can't auto W or else they're just going to CC you and you're going to die. So it's R like that. It's R E, whether that's your flop, you could either be either form. It could either be the flop if you're within range or the double cast. It's just situational on the situation. And after that, you pair that up with a quick at the same time, you W and then Q. You don't W auto Q or auto W Q. Show you one more time. It's just simple. You want to W before you Q though. And then Zonius, since everyone's going to focus you at that time. To run over, some of Fizz's animation cancels. To land your shark within the lane setting or even in team fights, if their tank is right here and their carries are right there, you're going to Q through whoever and you're just going to R mid animation. It's harder to to even track too it's too quick you'll get the hang of it i didn't have my r just do that i recommend practicing this in practice tool it's actually really important because like the higher the rank you are especially towards like okay it starts it starts i should say in plat like they're gonna know if you're trying to shark them if you're walking like this and you're going like this it's just too obvious so you have to like trick it up pretend like you're autoing a minion trying to go for a minion Q the side one and then shark. And that's when you pair that up with this. Not Zonia's, but yeah, you get the idea. Next combo is pretty known, I want to say, but it's E. Mid animation, you flash. You don't want to make it at the start because then it's too predictable. That's too predictable. You want it at the last second. Like that. Like a mid flop animation. This makes it so that they think it's not going to hit them. But it does. And you're going to get the AoE, uh, what's it called? The AoE slow. So, especially in lane, like, uh, let's say you're playing against the melee, or not melee, a range lane. This happens mostly in range lanes, I noticed. So, basically, you're going to Q auto W. You're just going to chase them down the long lane. And then, basically, obviously, they're, you're an assassin. They're going to start running back to your their tower. You're going to E. And you're just going to flash on top of them. Whether they flash back and know you're going to E-flash, you're still going to hit them. And if they don't, then you're just going to put yourself in a really good spot where they're going to be slowed and you can easily chase them down. So, yeah, the E-flash is a good way to catch your opponent's off guard. Recommend you get the hang of that. Next thing is uh, a pro for Fizz is basically he can see vision through walls if he uses his E. You have to get the hang of it and you have to know where the indents are within a wall but doing that gives you vision over dragon especially in the mid to late game when you're contesting the third or fourth drag or whether you're contesting that rift herald or baron like these are it's really underrated you get to see the hp so your jungler can steal at the right times and yeah as for summoner spells ignite flash 99 percent of the times probably even 100 is probably just the best thing to do and uh the alternative to that or an alternative is 
ignite tp into the harder lanes where you won't have as much kill pressure but if it's anything below diamond two i mean ignite flash is just best since it'll give you that everything what you want ignite for the early kill pressure and flash to use both offensively and defensively it's all around just what you want but tp ignite works since fizz naturally has mobility and technically can run without flash but i mean flash is just all around solid so ignite flash i just recommend as for rune options this will probably be the most standard page i mean everything here is pretty standard the variations i will say people some people do do is since ravenous got nerfed over these times some people go ingenuous hunter since it gives you haste on ludens and it gives you haste on zonias but uh yeah it's literally just a preference thing spare as you will ravenous hunter gives you omni vamp ingenuous gives you item haste and the second variation is going to be within the offensive tree some people go ap some people go attack speed some people go haste it's all on uh preference typically i actually think all work because ap will give you a lot more burst especially pre level six so you can punish mistakes more attack speed is good for thinning out waves even in your trades you're autoing four or five times that might give you that last auto to get the kill and ability haste is just all around good since your e on a lower cooldown gives you a lot more survivability and your shark gives you more playmaking potential all right as for starting items on fizz i just recommend corrupting potion all the time nothing else don't go dark seal or darn ring even though they give ap because it promotes constant trading and basically fizz trades 24 7 or wants to look for those fights and uh what's it called that sustain goes a really long way darn ring and dark seal sure do give ap but you're not gonna have the sustain to constantly be trading and they're especially darn ring it's more meant for the extended long laning phases where you're not really taking as many recalls and just looking to farm it out which is why you primarily see it on majors anyways but dark seal also just with the refillable won't give you as much sustain and just it makes your early game a lot weaker and corrupting potion just gives you all you need on your first recall especially if it's 650 gold basically your gold amounts you want is either 350 650 or 700 even uh what's it called even 750 works reason being is if you're backing with 350 gold you're gonna get dark seal 650 you're gonna get dark seal boots and typically even if you have 400 gold you want to go dark seal first reason being is a lot of people got Duran ring for initially it does give you empowered laning phase because of the early hp but it's mainly for like also mana regen but you're gonna rush an early lost chapter anyways most of the times especially into ap mages which is really common within the season but yeah 650 or and if it's 750 gold exactly then you go dark seal Duran ring but other than that typically it's going to be dark seal boots into codex slash lost chapter and with the early game boots you want to get boots within your first two recalls usually unless you have odd gold amounts but yeah you want early game boots because that builds into lucidity boots which you could also pick up early on some people rush ludens in which they sit on the tier one boots and if you never have the amount of 650 to upgrade to those tier two boots and you got like 850 gold they'll just go the blasting one get ludens then tier two boots but typically if you have the gold amount you will buy tier two boots pretty early within the game like pre 10 minutes so the standard uh, build basically there's two as of right now it's the one where you rush ludens and there's the run where you rush zonias either one works especially into 80 lanes the armor will help a lot but the inverter ability is really solid especially into these 2v2s team fighting and tower divings so yeah this was more standard last season ever since the ludens buffs this has been more common this season especially just sitting on lost chapter and then going zonias that also works too but i mean yeah you can really experiment with it personally for me against especially ap mages i like the ludens rush since it just makes the most sense to me and against ad lanes zonias does come in clutch especially against the zed because you can use uh the, what was it called status yeah the the passive of this to negate some of his burst um early on if you're fed in ahead have 10 stacks think you're not gonna die and just continue to snowball out of control with physics natural survivability uh 
getting Magi's is actually pretty solid since with your E and Zonias, you're likely not to die within a team fight, especially if your team is ahead and if you're taking these fights correctly. Uh, third item, you could either opt. Okay, considering that it's not Magi's, let's just say you go Zonias, Ludens. Third item, you could either opt for Lich Bane or what some people do is they opt for Rabadon's Death Cap. Lich Bane will give you more of a mid game spike. Rabadon's Death Cap will give you more of a late game spike. It's all on you uh, and how you want to approach that. And you could place Rabadon's Death Cap for Void Staff if they are stacking MR. With the Luden's Rush build, same concept, except you're just getting Zonia second. Pretty just standard stuff again. Rabadon's or Zonia's. Or I mean, Rabadon's or Void Staff. And if you're snowballing in a head, Magi's. My last variation I want to give. Gonna be Hextech Protobot Rush. You're gonna think I'm trolling since no, that's not what everyone does. But hear me out. You're gonna trade HP or you're gonna gain extra HP and damage. You get 10 more AP from Protobot from Ludens. And on top of that, uh, what's it called? It gives you HP. So it promotes more fighting. The problem is you'll have less wave clear. You'll just have to auto W waves and only E on cannon waves. But as long as you're recalling efficiently enough, You'll actually have enough, enough mana and not run into mana problems, especially if you hold on to your Corrupting Potion for quite a while. And just don't sell your Corrupting Potion for like Amp Tome. Just, just hold it for uh, up until like level 12 or such. 12 and upwards, that's when you sell it. Experiment with it because if you hate Victor with Crown of the Shattered Queens, guess what counters Crown of the Shattered Queens? It's Poke. And what is its active? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Crown of the Shattered Queens actually kind of gets countered by Protobell, honestly. And honestly, you could pair that up with Lucidity Boots for survivability, or you could pair that up with Magic Pen Boots for extra burst. I mean, it's all on you. This is more like the traditional Assassin Fizz from like Season 9, but typically people just get early lu Lucidity Boots anyways, and I mean, it's pretty standard from there. All right, so as for alternate items, Shadow Flame is really good if you rush it early on, whether that's Vex, whether that's Syndra, even like Katarina can do so, first, second item. Basically, with Fizz, typically speaking, Zonia's Ludens is going to be your first two items no matter what, and, uh, or Protobelt, Zonia's, slash just Mythic item into Zonia's, or Zonia's into Mythic item, and you're going to be picking up Shadow Flame third or fourth item, but if you do the math correctly, most likely Void Staff will be better. So, I mean, typically, yeah, you're just going to prioritize Void Staff over that. Cosmic Drive does give a lot of ability haste, which is what Fizz likes, but it's very lackluster in damage and it makes Fizz play more like a bruiser instead of an assassin. And Fizz is literally all in on that assassin like playstyle. So, Lich Bane, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff just does better than Cosmic Drive mid game. Crown of the Shattered Queens got nerfed in AP, just it doesn't deal enough AP, and I mean, I guess, it, yeah, it's just not, it's not, it's not better than Ludens and Proto Belts if we're looking at the statistics. Banshee's Veil, 99 times out of 100 is Zonius for the active, even it's a heavy AP comps, but there's that niche comp where they're full AP, and you can go Banshee's Veil. All right. Welcome. To the low elo section we are currently playing in mid gold and yeah it's going to be or like how to carry low elo basically it's just whoever has the best okay it's not even who has the best whoever makes the least mistakes wins especially mid game but if you're able to get a nice snowballed lead through your way of knowing what your win conditions are within the laning phase. They're actually... Let's drop a word right there. Is they're gonna go right here? They're gonna go right here, and we can hook him, hook him, hook him. Hook him, hook him, hook him. Okay. Hook him, hook him, hook him. No, 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 no. Uh, hook, 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 hook. Oh, uh, all right. I don't know what's going on. All right, we're just gonna... I don't know why our ADC just recalled too. It's kind of random. We could have, uh, while they're walking back, we could have hooked one and got a pick, but um, that's fine. Playing as AD Cat. And typically, within this lane, especially post level three, we just hard win. So we'll see how she plays. Uh, she's probably just going to queue the first three minions and then I'll look for the E. Pretty standard stuff. Cancel an auto attack. 
basically we can actually play for the shove why i'm scared of playing for shove is usually because i can actually get ganked but typically fizz early on against cat can set up a slow push into crash and then just eat her q Now we have W. She has no flash. She has a ignite TP. So we were able to take that. And it's just like that. Stuff like that. We're going to win because we're obviously going to hit level 2 first. And we're just going to have Pryo. So. Now we can just crash the wave and look for the reset. I am recording. So you finally learned how to play versus Katarina, right? I have to buy my items. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to... Let me eat back to lane really quick. It's cannon wave bouncing back so we don't lose as many minions. Do you understand? How to play Fizz and carrying your teammates? Of course I do. Alright. Now sit down and watch me. Show you how to carry your way through low elo. All right, Katarina's level three. We uh, kind of have to get a word for Poppy's gank since that's actually going to really kill us. Katarina Q's Dominion. And ideally, you don't want to freeze. All right, she's level four. That's horrible. But she has TP, so it just makes sense. We want to thin out the wave and then maybe even look for the shove because we don't want to fight her with a level disadvantage and wave disadvantage. Basically... We just hard win if we start off trades with Q. I'm actually going to tank. Tank the dagger, but just heavy trade. She has Electrocute over Conquer, which is uh, a lot more on the bursty side of things over those extended fights, which means those extended fights we will hard win. So looking for the shove. And you can't freeze on Katarina because you just give her the option to roam. So you don't want to do that. And if she cues us, we could just E right past it. But make sure our next wave isn't coming because if a wave is behind her, she'll just E back. That's not what you want. You always want to find really good trading situations against Kat where you're able to chunk her. Okay, she should have E'd back. That's kind of grief in itself, I'm being honest. But we're trying to wait for our ignite. I don't think we can. But in the end, we should be able to deny her this full wave. As long as our corrupting potion gives us enough mana. Deny her this full wave. We don't want to do anything besides deny her this full wave. Because this will put her so far behind. And it's not even about getting kills sometimes. But it's about denying creeps. I knew that was coming. Oh my god, my ping. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just got mad. Uh, Lucidity boots. I just needed to E Poppy's uh, E. And honestly, I thought I had enough spacing from the tower, but that's just unfortunate. It's going to be fine for us, but just it's my bad. I knew she was coming. That's why I didn't all in the cat under tower. You have to just deny XP. You don't want to actually go for the solo kill sometimes because the XP is... All that's needed. But it's fine. We can get the crash here. I don't think we'll get level 6. We probably won't. But we're actually going to get a deep ward. Oh, there's a fight at river. It's too late. It's probably doomed. I can show up afterwards though. Because they're going to try to take drag. Because I know in this rank they greed for those a lot. There's no ward here either. So we can get a double here. Get a double here. And it's just like that. You have to shove and then look for these plays at river. It's very much so doable. Alright, you better help. Katarina's trying to go after me. She has no flash, so she's not going to be able to get to me. I didn't know that bush was warded. Unlucky. We're going to be able to take a good recall, though. Ideally, I wanted Ludens. Ay, ay, ay. We're going to have to wait for Ludens because I want it so badly. CDR is what will let you make these playmaking plays. 
later on, it'll definitely help with your team fight and survivability. But early on, CDR will help with extended long trades. And if your shark is off cooldown, you're more likely to make more proactive plays. Why didn't you drag Fizz? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Katarina could have one shot bursted me. <laughs> but I don't expect them to know much. Honestly, I just suggest you mute all. And in post six on Fizz, especially when your shark is up, you're basically never looking to freeze the lane, but you're looking to actually shove and roam. Shove and roam or shove and tower dive laners. The mages or assassins. Oh yeah. I think we should have been able to look for it, not gonna lie. Katarina's level six. She's going like this tanky oriented build. Poppy smited Raptors and is probably closer to the full HP, so I have to be careful. So she went out shot down gold. Just auto, auto, auto. E whenever she ults her most important ability. And we just hard win as long as we land the shark. So, basically, or technically, uh, it's a cannon wave, so I do want to look for the recall. It's not good to recall when your team isn't going to recall, since you all want to be on the map at the same time, but this is probably doable since it's a really good recall mid. And basically, it's all about taking control of every fight, being at every fight, um... And just you know stomping because when you're far and ahead you just want to take every fight possible since you're gonna win it with your advantage you want to go to the lanes that are heavy trading oh what it should have focused the cannon all right katarina's missing we know poppy's bot side so we can actually uh, we'll hold on to our vision we can probably just look for the all in here I'm not gonna lie, like literally, it's just that. Play it safe, path towards top side, hovering top side since we know that Poppy's hovering, trying to gank mid. Oh, all right, you should have came mid. So that way you. I literally knew it. Uh, it would have been so good if you just counter ganked. But, I mean, we could just play for, uh... Wait for me. We could just play for this tower, uh, counter jungle. Flash through. Get the kill there. Now we can take top side. And it's all about controlling the game. With your lead, you don't want to just AFK stay mid. But when you shove and crash waves under tower... It's when you look to roam and such. You have rift. Place rift. Place rift. Place rift. Place rift. Ah. Uh, Alright, this is so grief. Alright, now it's just too late. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is just... This is just not good. It's not good. It is not good. It's just not good. Not good. Oh, it's good. We're going to E to slow onto the poppy. Master, you should have been able to get that easily. I don't know what he's doing. I'm being honest. I'm like really confused on what he's trying to accomplish. All right. Just should have been a lot cleaner. I'm being honest. I don't know what Master is doing. Should have been a faster rift. Should have been an easier tower dive, but I mean, questionable decisions made in these lower ranks, right? Like, it's just really easy to take control after you get that lead mid. Since as long as you know the matchup's better, it's just, it's easier. To get that lead to start you off, and then after that, translate that. Some people struggle with getting that first lead within the lane. Some people struggle with translating that lead. Some people struggle with both. It's just all dependent on, uh, you know, the player you are. But typically it's just review. Look at the decisions you make.
whether if is if you roamed at a bad time, recalled at a bad time, didn't have the right uh, hypothesis about the lane, all that stuff. It's a long process, but it's pretty easy to spot. Especially given at these ranks, like all you have to do is look at your deaths most of the time and then boom, you'll find a reason or like some reason to improve. We're actually going to try to all in the Katarina here. She has no flash, so it's easy. Like literally, if you land the shark, you just all in. And your shark is on such a low cooldown, it's I mean very much so doable. Hit me! Oh man. What a bummer. That's my bad. The bot lane didn't have Pryo. Thought it was just gonna be a 2v2 with Master Yi and I, but the whole bot lane's here. And I can't play for this Master Yi since he's uh probably first timing. I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean it's like I had the right mindset there. We're trying to fight, take a favorable fight, kill the Poppy, and then look for Infernal. But Master Yi doesn't know what he's doing. So we just have to like make him not a factor in our decision making. But just play around competent laners like Volley Bear or Bot Lane. It's fine. It's like literally you're just going to have these like... like We we commonly call them win traders in League. But they're just people that don't know anything. And you just have to like be okay with it. Since on the other team they probably have the same players. Like right now they're probably saying Cat's a win trader. You know what I mean? It's a game of who can capitalize off the biggest win traders. Because there's so many mistakes that are made. So it's like, you're going to get that one player who just makes too many mistakes and you can punish. It's on both teams. So it's like, you can't even say it's not balanced. Take it. Take it. Like, literally. We can group around this. Team fight settings wise. They're not. They can't. They can't fight for it. I'm just going for mini poke. We can actually play for this fight, though, really easily. We just have to make sure we CC Katarina. Yep, just W tank it. We got it. I just got to land a really good Megalodon, and we should be chilling. We ulted the Katarina, so she couldn't... Uh, what's it called? We ulted the Katarina, so that way she couldn't, uh, you know, ult. And, I mean, she's basically the most important target there since she could have reset all over us, even though she's level 8 compared to our level 11. But it's all about prioritizing the most important target. And if you have a team who's actually fed and ahead in damage, what you can do is just play front to back. That also works. Where you just auto whoever's closest to your most uh, fed carry. Nice. I'm being honest, I'm so fed at this point, especially in other regions like China and Korea. Uh, junglers should leash their mid laners red and blue buff. But anyways. Taking initiative. Can I take blue? You mind? I never flay I never like flamed him, you know what I mean? Like I never spam pinged him for anything. So like I'm not toxic. I've never been a toxic dead day in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need the mana and the CDR really does help. And it's Master Yi, so he doesn't really need much. Let me see if I can make a roam bot. Basically, because there's no mid tower, you want to go to wherever the next tower is, which is going to be bot lane tower. So yeah. Shark there. Ah, you eat on Leonis so that way. Uh, ah, guess what? <laughs> That's so funny. It hit Leona. We're just controlling the game every way, everywhere they want to fight. We're there, so we're always gonna win it. And even if they don't want to fight, we're diving them, so we're forcing them to take fights. Because when Fizz gets ahead, the pro he has is he's able to one-shot people in uncounterable ways. Reason being is he has his E and Zonius. So like there's literally, if you get like super far ahead, 
there's going to be no counterplay. But that's only if you're able to get that lead lead. He's very punishable in lane. Especially if their team plays around you. And when he's useless, he's actually useless and doesn't offer anything. Nice job, Master Yi. Oh. We know that. And you basically want to be panning your camera everywhere. Especially when they get that lead. The reason why Fizz players, especially in the lower ranks, they're inconsistent. Is because after they get these leads, they don't look for these fights. Like, they don't look. They don't pan their camera everywhere. Okay. <laughs> you just have to update your... Uh... You just have to update your map decision. Uh, what was it? Not update, but improve your map awareness. I, what in the world? Why is that so big? Oh, we can actually stay on the map since no one's recalled yet. Maybe Master Yi just died, but we can farm up for Lich Bane or Magi's. Yeah, we'll probably just get Lich Bane here. It's pretty massive, especially when they don't have as much magic resist. So yeah, that, that's it. Map awareness is an essential. And using F keys, faker keys, I call them. So we're cracking top wave or top towers. We're going to be pushing mid. They should be resetting and trying to look for drag after they take the inhib though. It's going to be a bad fight, I'm guessing. It's fine. These Master Yi and I are alive, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. We get a flash from the jungler. We'll take it. And we know she's going to path towards this bot side here, so... We actually might be able to look for something. Nah, we can't. She's with her team. Like Leona. Master Yi's going in 1v5. Let's check this out. Can he do it? Probably not. And I'm not going to int my... Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to int my... Shut down gold. Take it. Our, our ult is up in 9 seconds. Poppy's top side, so we can actually take it really easily. Take it. I'm hovering in jungle, so that way they can't even contest, even if they wanted to. And Fizz isn't really good at taking objectives, so you... Especially when you have that lead. It's all about the first 10 minutes and getting that lead. It lets you have control over the map. You can control uh, areas where they can proactively contest objectives. You want that control. Let's see if anyone comes. Do they see me? Oh, it's because I use Sweeper. I'm so bad. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of adjusting, guys. I'm adjusting to Season 12. But basically, when you use Sweeper, they could see you within uh, Chem Tank. Oh, that's so interesting. But yeah, we should be shoving mid and bot. We could even go Baron, but I mean, I guess reliably speaking, it would be good for us to uh, probably just group bot since there's top inhib. I'm stunned, so I couldn't Zonius. Unlucky. Unlucky! Oh yeah, yeah. It's like we should hard win this fight. We have a Hilo. Just auto front to back. Auto front to back. It's the easiest fight. It's 4v5. Or it should be. Master Yi was topside, which is really random. But like, you get the idea. It's literally an easy fight. It's a favorable fight since we have top inhib. That should never have happened. Okay. Anyways. That should have never happened. It's literally man advantage. The decision making is unreal. That's why, like, if you look at a normal gold game, what happens is they throw leads back and forth because they don't know what to group over. Especially mid game, it's a whole wreck. They don't know what to group over, what win conditions they have towards team fighting, and they don't know basically, like, specifically what to do. They're just like autopilot pilot playing. I'm just gonna fight. I'm just going to farm, like, without any theory behind it. You want to have theories. 
You want to ask yourself why you're doing the things you're doing. Basically. Every time. Every time you do something, question why you're doing it. And when you know why you're doing something, like it kind of makes sense to you, ask yourself any alternatives to that theory. Because guess what? There's probably a more optimal thing you could be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I can kill Timo because he's, uh... Uh, that's Katarina's TP. What am I watching? What? <laughs> I love this rank. It's moments like those that just make me laugh. <laughs> All right, now we're just pushing in. And basically, as soon as you take... As soon as you take top inhib or bot inhib, you want to group to the opposite side of the map. Since they have to contest that top inhib wave, which is hard to do. And uh, now we can go to, towards that mid inhib. What the? All right, just back, just back, just back. Are they getting MR? Not really. Leona has some MR. Like, I don't know if I'm being honest. It's gonna seem kind of troll. I feel like Shadow Flame might actually be the go-to here. Nah, Shadow Flame just gets outskilled. That's the problem. And that's why I personally. Oops. I personally don't like Shadow Flame. If you get it second, maybe even you never get it first or second because you want to get your Mythic with Zonias. But third item, it's like it'll be good at third item. But as soon as people start building MR and start leveling up to get more ma natural magic resist, it just ends up getting outskilled by Void Staff. So it's like, do you really want it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just tough. Tough stuff. Yeah, we got Magi's movement speed. We're just sweeping to make sure. You can't sweep with, or like, there's, you can't place normal wards within here. So it's like, there's no point in sweeping. We're just going to stand here and then try to look for uh, ulti pick. It's kind of risky. We don't want to look for it. Timo has no Zonia, so we might be able to shark him. Shark and big. <laughs> it was worth a try. He was autoing minions, so. It's worth a try. We're gonna guarantee get this drag, that's the thing. Is it, is it like really that bad? Nah, I'm just gonna E over the wall. Oh, I'm lagging. I'm lagging. But guess what? They focused me all the way, which means our team can collapse. They literally stood still. They literally just stood still. Stood still trying to focus me. When I was in my Zonia state. So our team can obviously win that. Really should win that. It's really easy to. It's because we set them up to be this far ahead. I'm not going to lie, I probably could have re-recorded, found a game where I had this clean 24-0, give you this unrealistic, like, uh, stomp, right? Because, like, there are just going to be those games where they perfectly, it goes too perfectly, you know what I'm saying? Where your every lane loses and where it's just a kill fiesta, but, like, you know, realistically, this is what will happen. Bot lane will semi be behind. Jungle just doesn't know what they're do they're doing. It, it looks like he's carrying now, but it's because we set him up to be this far ahead. Volley Bear, uh, you know, I think he was struggling top, but we ended up just taking first tower, diving the Teemo, and causing havoc. But like, you see what I'm saying? It's because every optimal move we make sets it up into the second. League's a very snowball-oriented game. Every decision you make matters. If we didn't tower dive the Katarina at level 3 and slow push it, it wouldn't lead to us getting 
Just a really nice snowball -y lead. Uh, they're fighting topside. I don't know if they win that. Uh, Demonic Embrace on Teemo, huh? Do they win that? They could either go Baron or we could look for the end. So yeah, this will probably be the game. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't think I can. Maybe I can. I'm just playing for objectives. We don't really need to force it on the Teemo since he can't stop us from taking both inhibs. <laughs> oh man, what a what a game. It's literally the game. Literally? Don't fight. What? Literally? Uh, yeah, just go Baron. Go Baron. All they have to do is just go Baron. Because we're going to get super minions and end through that way. I griefed with the shark there because it's just the end of the game. It's over. And him spawning soon? Oof. Toughy. Oh! But before we can take Baron and end just like that, they forfeit. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Alright. Welcome to the how to translate leads portion of the video. I'm, again, trying to keep it realistic to how, uh, what's it called? Your ranks look, so this is going to be a high diamond game so like you know I, there's gonna be good and there's gonna be bad basically the goal here is i'm gonna get a lead this is gonna be through laning or roaming depending on the quirky plays and then spread it what are they <laughs> going on? What are they going on this account decayed from master tier so yeah let's get into it uh fizz is a champion where He's really good at taking control of game. Wait, is the sound not on? Okay, it is on. He's really good at transferring or just snowballing games out of control. And basically, I'm going to try to go in depth on like uh, how to play with junglers and when to look for roam timing. So we're playing against Corky, a pretty common pick. Really medium difficulty matchup because he'll tend to outscale us. But we do have some early game power. We're just going to get shoved in, obviously, like usual. Against these range lanes. We try to E forward to see if he would walk up maybe. We would get the E radius on him. But we cannot. So we just have to allow him to slow push it into us. Just uh, collect the wave under tower. Okay. Graves is at blue. Kindred might just path towards uh, other dudes blue. But typically here. Oh wait. Really? I might not even be able to play for Pryo. We just can we're just gonna auto him every time he steps up. Go for that extended long trade since we're the one with corrupting potion compared to his Tear of the Goddess. And now we just wanna look for pressure on the wave. Since he didn't crash it under our tower. Why did Kindred not just take blue? That's so odd to me, and I should have hit the minion on the W for the reset. Yeah. Basically, if they're slow pushing the wave too slow, you can often just play for the wave. Like I did there, and find yourself a favorable trade, but... Yeah. We're gonna try to go for a trade here. Gonna make sure we get the kill there. And those extended long trades is what you're good at. Oh, wait. You might TP to like a cannon wave. Cannon minion. He's gonna TP. He has to TP. No way. But like, we just do simple wave. Not wave. No. Through simple understanding of the lane, we were able to cheese a solo kill there. I don't believe Clarky flashed. But we do have to take a recall here, knowing that it's a cannon wave and this is like. The best opportunity to take that recall. We're just going to clear these two minions and then try to look for the reset. 
Corky doesn't deal enough damage early on to actually, um, yeah, destroy us like that. Corky's roaming towards top. My boy Kindred's got lead though. That's the thing. I can't. He didn't pan his camera mid to see what I was doing. Unlucky. We just weren't on the same page. I was trying to reset. He should have just taken the his marking and then looked for the reset since I was also trying to reset. You just want to be on the same page with your jungler. If he's on the map, you're on the map. Basic rule of thumb. That's how it works. Why? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, that's kind of grief. Gonna try to take another electro trade there. We need to proc that electro if we want to do some considerable amount of damage. Post level six, he's probably just gonna chuck his R at the wave and try not to fight. But yeah, he's just every time we E in or if we uh Nice! See, and if you trade with your laners properly, those ranged lanes, you put them in uh ganking range. So just all around ideal oh now he tps okay he didn't use tp early on i'm trying to path here but it'll be too late probably yeah nice 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 see what i'm saying by you just want to hover your jungler play towards them so that way they can never oh, run 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 that way they can never lose the jungle matchup since you're always going to be there first. Yeah, I have to be careful because we don't know if bot lane's mid. Like, we just have to play on the safe side of things. Okay, they're bot. E back on top of him for the re-engage. Hey, we even landed the shark. Because we turned level 6 unexpectedly. And he's going to get zoned this full wave unless he looks for the recall. He has to look for the recall. Otherwise, yeah. And I'm saving my mana for just in case he tries to stay. And then we could look for the dive. We're just trying to zone XP. We're just trying to zone XP. And if he steps up, we'll just get the kill. It's all about that jungle pressure you assert. Like that. And now the wave is pushing back towards us. Playing with that jungler. Gotta get tier twos here for the CDR. Actually, it's actually more common just go lost chapter early on. For this, I mean, it gives ten ability haste. It less than boots, but at the same time, uh, what's it called? The mana it gives is nice. And now, basically. Yeah, we're just going to be playing with the jungler for the most part. I don't have anything to really help with. You can probably get the kill. You have Yumi on you. Come on, Kindred. Take it all, my man. <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. He's going to... Uh, I just got to crash the wave. You're going to get a lead within the jungle since Yumi's on you, and then I'll... uh. The AFK pushing mid. Let's see bot lane wave states. Top lane wave states. You want to gank the lanes or roam to the lanes that are heavy trading. Because if they're heavy trading, that, mean the, that means they'll be low. In which tower diving becomes that much more doable too. Okay, they take drag. That's fine. We're snowballing. This game out of control. We're going to drop the E on the wave since we just want to shove. And I'm being honest, we could probably look to dive. Darius just needs to stack that big wave. I have my R. So, like, just stack the big wave and then we should be good. We should be good. I, I walked all the way around. It's fine. It's going to be a lead. It's going to be his R. And it's a cannon wave. So, I mean, like, literally, top lane's so diveable. Kindred recalls, though. 
we were we could have went for the dive. He just wanted to recall for Corky and Slayer, which is fine. Or at this point, Corky 0-4, we want to spread the lead elsewhere, whether that's towards jungle pressure or top. We can influence both of those fights really easily. I don't think I'll be going back top since Graves isn't heavy trading enough. Like Nasa shouldn't have sums. You want to go towards the lanes where, like, they have no sums, nor do they have uh, ultimate, but this Nasus isn't pressuring enough. Nami's mid. I heard her stuff go off. Bump, ba -dump, bump. Now, Corky's just hands off, just shoots his R 24-7. So if he wants to do that, we could just shove in Rome 24-7. That's the pro of having Pryo on Fizz. Typically, what will happen? Are you serious? Ugh. I meant to flash R. Going to me. Hope you have heal. I have red buff. I'm saving my Efer. If he tries to do anything mischievous, but that shove in room, like I said. <laughs> the shove in room. If your laner's playing really far passive, they just give you all the room to just shove in room. So, like, you're going to be able to push the pace of the game no matter what. Now we can look for reset. Uh, we can actually stay within the lane. Or, er, like,. For this fight, but I think Kindred's ahead enough we could just reset. <laughs> yeah, see, like I said, so like I could recall here, but if they needed me at the fight, I might have actually stayed since I have red and blue. People struggle when it's the laners just standing back and then trying to give away farm. Or, like, that's what I see the common trend be. If they're playing back, just E the wave and then look to roam. You can always roam somewhere. Whether that's bot or top. We're gonna actually look bot again since we know they have no summoner spells and it's gonna be very much so easy to do. We walked over our vision ward. We're gonna focus the Lucian here. Come on, Yumi. Come on, Yumi. Nah, I'm just kidding. Thousand gold shut down here. But we have more tower platings to take, so it's fine. Just gonna take a tower plating and then start heading back mid. Getting bot lane tower platings. Gonna go back mid for this Corky. Oh, you're taking Rift, which is fine. We could have collapsed on him right there for another kill, but Jack is probably better. Yep, yep, yep. You gotta identify what your win conditions are and what to play for. That's like the key thing. And biggest tip is, in, especially in the lower ranks, it's gonna be that team fighting. You see how we can just take things from 0 to 100 even without our ulti? Oh. Even without our ulti, we could 100 to 0 him. You just gotta know what your limits are, especially when you're fed. Thought I could shark him on the way out for the kill. Unlucky. Every time your R is up, you can make a play on the map. Yeah. And basically here, we see Nami trying to gank us bot. Uh, uh. Yeah, that, that's just unlucky. I mean, like, we tried to make it happen and such, but I mean, it just, it is what it is. We went one for one after we got two to three man mid. And now we're just going to start building towards Zonius. 
But basically, basically, every, uh, what's it called? Every time our shark is up, we're trying to do something on the map. And I mean, that's just all about translating your lead. And wherever Kindred is playing around, we want to play around too, and then sync our recalls with his since, uh, what's it called? He's the person next to us that holds a lot of power. And then also Yumi could go on to us too. For us to be extraordinarily strong. And Graves. They're all bot side. Kindred's top. Damn. <laughs> yep. And just like that, we play for every fight. We play for every fight since... Uh, that's what you're good at when you're ahead, am I right? And you're so slippery because you're going to have CDR, which puts your E on a low cooldown. You can E twice within a fight. And, I mean... On top of that, you have Zonius. So, I mean, it's just a lot of stuff to fight with. Now we're just going to shove in a wave here. Pretty standard stuff. You want to shove in a wave before you try to look to do something on the map. My mic straight lagging. Or my camera at least. Basically at this point we're just taking... All right, so basically, I was taking, what's his face? I was taking Graves' blue. I thought he'd show up beforehand in which we could kill. But, uh, yeah, he came a little bit later, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. It was supposed to be a lot more clean, let's just say that. He was supposed to walk up, I was supposed to shark him, and it would have been an easy blue after that. But I started blue because I thought he was... Uh, at his wolves and was going to be there for a while. We did outplay it though, so we'll take it. We just used our Zonias and E to survive along with our mobility so we couldn't die. And I mean, now we're just pushing and trying to close out the game. Baron's up soon, so that'll probably be the objective. Q Shark. Ah, I'm lucky. <laughs> Alright, it's called limit testing. <laughs> nah, it's not really limit testing. It's after we take mid inhib or mid tower, we're not going to use our shark. Probably just going to path towards drag. It's an objective based game. You don't want to just throw your shutdown gold after uh, you take objectives. You want to recall, reset, and come back on the map stronger. taking camps again the more camps you farm away from graves or the enemy jungler it gives you xp and denies them xp so i mean it's a win-win and then now while they're put while they're getting pushed in by uh mid-wave super minions we're just trying to look for baron here or the rift herald 
we'll probably have to turn on it. Turn on them halfway. But that's fine. Q shark. I mean, ideally, it was to zone them. And basically, all we had to do there to guarantee we win the fight is delete their most squishy target and then zone us. Get Magi since we're pretty snowballed. And then we'll close it out here. Either crash bot or top wave. Or top slash bot tower. Since we already have everything for mid. Alright, we just gotta push him, bot. But we're trying to wait for the like, Kindred and Darius to come. Come on. Oh, and just like that, they forfeit. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Alright, we're in the range matchup guide section. And uh, we're playing against... A lot of people consider him broken. Yes, he's S plus tier. We're playing against Victor mid. Uh, pretty standard mage. But basically what people struggle with is AFK getting shoved in and not doing anything. Uh, or them playing too far back and not knowing what to do. So, I mean, I feel like this VOD covers a little bit of both since in the end, Fizz, he does have stronger, a stronger early game than Victor since... Victor ends up outscaling. So typically, what you want to do is just let the wave hit each other. And every lane, every range lane, the advice is to always get shoved in. But there's going to be some lanes where they're taking it too slow. And you can hit level 2 and actually look for trades. And if they let you just have all the pressure, you can... Uh, what's it called? Shove in the wave and then take a good recall. So like literally, we just let the wave play out. We get the first three minions. He gets the auto there. The wave is even, which means we can actually play for level 2 first. And... Fizz's level 2 trading isn't bad. It's usually going to be short and bursty. But yeah, it's the level 3 Q engages where it's uh, pretty deadly for mages. Victor started a Duran ring, which means typically in the farm farm style lane, it's better. Since corrupting potions more for fast trading, which is what Fizz has. And well, if we get short bursty trades off, that's what we win in since we have extra sustain compared to him. He's playing really far back. That's fine. Basically, if they play really far back, they're just giving you pressure in lane, which means you could either take good recalls or uh, you can roam. But that's usually later on into the game. But yeah, he's just giving us pressure. It's fine if he doesn't want to take trades onto us because in the end, we're just going to get a really good recall in the end. Basic premise is the wave shells were level three. So now we're deadly or we could take extended long trades onto him. And basically, he goes for the cannon minion. We know that. So that's when we look for a trade within the lane. He's poking us out little by little. We hit him with the E and hit the wave. That's the most ideal situation. We're getting hovered, but that doesn't really matter. Typically, all that happens in the end is I get the shove off. Little poke, poke, trade, trade. And then we get a decent recall early. He gave us pressure early on. And I mean, typically, if mages are shoving you in, typically against mages... This is a uh, pretty good CS count number to have. And the wave half crashes, which means it doesn't fully go under tower so we can get a good split push. And if he doesn't TP back, he ends up losing a lot of minions. He TPs back. We take a nice little bursty trade. And basically when you're Q, I didn't do that within that trade. But basically while you're running back, your Q will come back up. So you have the option to retrade back onto him. He goes for the cannon wave. Or the cannon minion, we retrade back onto him. Simple stuff. He goes for the cannon, he goes for the minions, we look for the trade. We look for the ignite auto attack. And I mean, that's just all about fizz. It's all about pushing those limits. Pushing those limits against these weaker mages early on. And basically the goal here is to crash the wave and recall. The wave doesn't fully crash. 
we clean up some of the remainder. And we look for another reset. No Sam's mid. It would be better if we have Ignite, but if it may just use their flash over uh Assassins. If Assassins and may just use flash, it's worth for Assassins since the Assassins have natural mobility. We recalled on the cannon wave, so we're not gonna lose too many minions. We're probably gonna just lose two of the two of the melees, and then we're actually gonna get the cannon here. Start slow pushing it back, but Assassins have mobilities, mages don't, so that's a good thing for us. It's a slow pace lane early on, but we're able to take good recalls and, I mean, take control within the lane. We had Pryo to go to first scuttle if Shaco wanted to fight for it. Now we're level 6, so when we do shove in the wave, now we have the option to actually roam. We look for the mini trade, because if he stays here, we actually can all in him. We crash the wave. We pan our camera topside, Gangplank stacking a big wave, which means we can dive. Basically, you want to look for the lanes that are heavy trading before you look to roam. And look at that. We find Kane, level 4. We shark him. And we one-shot burst him. Get that last auto. And... Yeah, we just run away. Victor's roaming, but it's a bit too late since we have three people top compared to their two. And then at this point, yeah, we're chasing down the Victor. Victor tries to follow. We lose minions mid, but we push an advantage for the team. So basically, we recall after that. Ignore the build. I'm actually going Proto Belt as a way to think. Er, it's season 12, and basically why I'm testing out Proto Belt is I'm thinking that's the counter to Crown of the Shattered Queens to take the shield off. And I'm also testing like just how good it is in general. We come back in lane. Victor has no TP. We want him to stay in lane as long as possible since we have AP advantage since we have a recall after a kill. And we deal a lot of burst damage. So any trade here is good. But just like that, since we have the extra AP and burst, we just all in him from 100 or it was more like 75% to zero. And the wave is going to crash while he has no TP. We just want to crash the wave and then look for another reset. Since we know the next wave after that's a cannon. And against mages, especially post 6, even without ignite or ultimate, you have to know when you can just go in and get kills. That roam I did, it was more of a lead for myself since we didn't really do much for like gangplank. We didn't solo kill the ergot, but I just got a solo kill onto, uh, what's his face? Kane, which is just a solo 300 uh, plus gold lead for me. And basically, we just want to roam whenever the wave is shoved. That's why Pryo is so important. You don't just want to have mages poke you out and such. We're back into lane with Shark, which means we either have kill pressure on Victor, or if we're panning our cameras to the side lane, we can look to roam. What do we choose to do? I mean, we can actually roam top, but Shaco's bot and bot lane's heavy trading. So we can take drag. We just want to play for what objective is being played for, which is drag, and uh, it would seem so that... We crash the wave mid lane. We're looking bots and trying to roam and get our bot lane fed. We're focusing the cane front to back and we four man dive bot lane. We basically lose just six minions mid since uh, we crashed the wave. It was bouncing back out. He pushed the wave out, but we lose six minions, but we get, I believe it was like three kills. Three kills there and a dragon. So, I mean, it's something we just will take it. I believe after this, right now our wave state's doomed. So, we just want to go back mid. Fix the wave and then reset. We're making sure that the wave crashes. We get a tower plating in the process. Rakan shows mid. And then now we look for the reset. Now we look for the reset. I didn't realize that we were backing for enough gold to get our proto. And now we're coming back mid. We're coming back on a cannon wave. And look at this. From 100 to 0. When you get that lead on Fizz, you got to know when to take these uh, opportunities. Victor's bot. So we solo kill the Cena. And then we just take tire plating's mid since Victor shows bots. And the, the ADC is mid. I mean, it's fine. Typically... If laners roam, that means you could take tire platings and a lot of minion waves. Which means, in the end, they have to get a kill 
or if they get a kill it's probably more worth for you xp and gold wise since you're gonna get two waves and like two tower platings but two kills or more and i mean that'll be an even trade there but you gotta be tricky when you roam we crash the wave we're just trying to look to reset since we can buy items we get the reset sadly the camera panning the camera panning is not working ah yeah yeah or like you can't lock it onto a champion which sucks we get another reset here we get lucidity boots and then now we're fed we're ahead we're playing to look for every fight possible and you should, you gotta limit test really as soon as victor gets crowned of the shattered queens we have a counter which is proto belt it's just a test i'm doing and honestly i've done it a couple times it's actually pretty good since it kind of makes its mythic passive useless kane is hovering mid i have no clue since i have no ward yeah we just proto belt forward and look at that it's off i have corrupting potion to heal up it's fine i have corrupting potion and as soon as we crash the wave in we're looking to sweep river or roam And if Victor follows right here, we'll actually solo kill him. But yeah, we're just hovering bot since uh, they're really pushing for that tower. Now we can look for the all in here. Q shark. E on top of him and then just look for the all in. As soon as our Q comes back up, we're looking for it. But yeah, we have to flash auto. And just taking things 0 to 100 against these mages. With Fizz, when you get that lead, it's either we're pushing our lead mid lane, killing, solo killing Victor, and then taking tower platings, or we're looking to shove and roam. Either way, it's a win-win. And, I mean, that's the beauty of having pressure on assassins. You can just do a lot on the map. But if you get behind, if you misplay the laning phase, you end up going 0 and 2, or even going even with Victor since he outscales. I mean, it's pretty doomed. Kane is killing up a storm. We take a tower there. And typically, I mean, I... Wait. Does this show when drag comes up? Typically, I didn't want to look for a fight. I just wanted to get a really big golden XP lead. And then come to drag with uh, four resources. But my team gets aced. Can't really control it there. But we got a massive solo lead for ourselves. And then now after you take tier 1 tower, oh, I can't lock my camera onto a champion. It's literally Riot Games, actual brain dead company. I have no clue why. What happens is bot lane goes mid, mid laner goes bot. Reason why Fizz is good at side laning, pushing in waves, sweeping from the side, and then coming for a flank. Uh, if there's going to be a fight mid. But yeah, you just want to clear a couple waves, sweep. And then look for fights either mid or wherever fights are going to happen. We're just kind of walking around. Mid lane isn't getting pushed by our ADC and support. So right now we're just kind of wasting time. I thought I could take a free Gromp, but Rakan's hovering. If nothing's being pushed on the map, I mean, you just have to respect it. You just have to respect it since you dying bots because you were overextended does nothing for your team. They have to be pushing up. I know Victor and I are alone side lane. So I end up just crashing one more wave in. And as soon as I crash that wave in, guess what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to roam mid. See if I can take a fight. It's on Kane, so it's obvious that he just hard wins. Since bruisers will tend to just outdo assassins. Unless they're super giga fed. But I mean, not much is happening on the map. Not much is happening. Kane takes a fight. We know we have our team for backup. While Kane doesn't have his, we E back onto him and then get the kill. It's simple stuff like that, baiting him in. Because there's no objectives up to fight for, so there's nothing we can push. Unless Shaco goes for a counter jungle and I can follow. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Back again. Start building towards Zonias. Path it mid because we know Rift is being placed. 
Every time there's going to be a team fight setting, especially when you're ahead, you want to be with your team. The goal here was to take the tower. We end up getting hard engaged on by the Rakan. We're able to get onto parts of their backline, but it's all just really sloppy since, uh, well, on their raid after this. We got hard engaged on by the Rakan, so that's kind of a throw there. We just wanted to take the mid tower. And I mean, that's why you just never forfeit. Throws always happen, am I right? We eventually path towards the squishies, which is Victor and Cena. Twitch and Lulu, typically with that, they don't necessarily need peel. So I'm not really throwing my shark to peel for Twitch since in the end, he has all the peel he needs to survive. And my goal here is just to go for the assassins and whoever the squishy targets are. We have Zonia, so in teamfight settings, us getting focused is actually harder. We're actually gonna group around drag, push in mid, path towards drag you ideally want to have vision control so that way you can throw your shark at them from places where they wouldn't know sweeping we see kane and we need twitch to be alive for him to actually shred the kane who is fed and i mean it's very versatile it's very versatile with how we could play these fights. Front to back could probably work since the Cena and Victor aren't fed enough. Or what we can do is uh, just come from a flank and then one shot their back line. Either one works, but we don't want to get... Uh, basically, their win condition is getting a hard engage with Urkan. So yeah, we're taking up drag here. I'm not taking drag since Fizz doesn't necessarily shred objectives well. We're coming from the side where there's Fog of War. And trying to one-shot the squishies. Victor flashed away, so that's a win. And I mean, we're playing our team fights how we normally do. We get two flashes there, and that's all we want to do. They're zoned. They're zoned from the fight, so now we can just focus Kane. And now we're just trying to stay alive here with Zonia's and E. In team fight settings, it's like you have to either. We won the team fight because we got dragged, but we won the actual team fight itself. We got both their backlines flashes, and in the end, we ended up zoning their backline from even touching the dragon pit fight. We zoned them all the way back there, so we don't want to commit after we just burn two flashes, but just help our team in focusing Kane since he's a fed one. And now we're protobelt taunting to them since we know Gangplank has barrels and such. We ideally thought it would be a lot smoother, but, uh, yeah, Ergot just ends up doing that. Twitch gets the cleanup, but overall, I mean, it was good thought process. Just generally speaking, knowing that Ergot wasn't that fed and Gangplank had items with scaling. So, I mean, we're just trading shutdowns back and forth, but as long as you have a good thought process behind what you're doing and you actually look at the VOD afterwards to see where things could have went better, what you could have done better. I mean, in the end, that's really all that matters when it comes to improving. We're going to fast forward. Baron's up. Gangplank has no teleport, but typically we want to be pushing towards top side. Kane is in our jungle. We E on top of him for the slow. And I didn't want him to hit the plant because that's his way of escaping. It ends up being a fight, but since everyone is closer to us. The fight is closer to our base, so they're going to be obviously outnumbered. We're able to just chase them down since Kane was deep in our jungle. The thing about League is there's no step, step. Alright, so basically Kane, we're trying to contest Baron since they know... Or we know they have no vision over us. So we're trying to poke them out, push them out. They have no ADC and we're just trying to look barren. But there's no step-to-step -step guide for carrying. You just have to adapt to what's happening. But I mean, there's guidelines on like what you can do repeatedly. And like the most optimal way to play. But basically you can test objectives, especially when you're ahead. They won't be able to... 
contest since you're going to have vision control. Vision control is key since they have to face check you, not the other way around. Because you get the first strike onto them, which means in the end, you're probably just going to deal more damage. You can hit them with CC and then it's it's just it's easier from there. We use Fog of War to our advantage to win these fights. Kane is dead, which means Baron should be free as long as Shaco gets his smite. And I mean, yeah, Fizz just controls the pace of the game. Even though Victor outscales, we're making it hard to. He's out farming us, but at the same time, we out pressured him. Now we recall with Baron minions. Now we're running out of base. We're trying to fight for drag. Typically before an objective fight, the priority is shoving in mid since they either have to contest that mid wave or that objective. We're recalling to finish our item. We know that Rakan has MR, Cena's going with send. Kane has MR and Urgot has MR. So ideally, yeah, we just want to wait it out. We just want to wait it out. And since we're coming here, we just want to play front to back. Auto whoever's closest to Twitch and make sure he doesn't die. In which we do so. As long as we keep Twitch alive, we end up winning the game. And after we kill their front line, now we're onto their back line. Basically, if your ADC is fed and they can deal the majority of damage in team fights, you want to peel for them. Since as long as they're alive, you should be able to win the team fight. And then we get another pick there, but yeah. There's two ways to play fights on Fizz. It's either the one where you're peeling for your ADC with your shark. Or the one where you're flanking and trying to dive their backline. Their backline doesn't deal enough damage for me to want to not help the Twitch focus the Kane and Urgot. Since they're the damage dealers. Or at least for this game in particular. And I mean some games like these. Some games like these. You aren't going to stomp them. Like you aren't just going to go 5-0 and oh within lane. Well I mean. Over time, it was like 5-1, and one, but like, you're not just going to go 5-0. and oh. Especially in low though, you can do that a lot since there's a lot of mispositioning and, uh, you know. We get a flash there. That's all we need. They're going to start to focus us, but we have Zonias, which is a way we can survive. We E on to Kane. Oh, I think our Zonias was on cooldown, actually. Our Zonias was on cooldown, and that just ends up being an unfortunate fight. It's a mistake on my part, since I should have just allowed uh, Cena to flash. And then we could have just taken it from there and played with the Twitch. But yeah, especially in the lower ranks, there's a lot of mispositions and a lot of uh, people who don't respect Fizz's damage. Especially those uh, weak early game mages. So you're able to cheese a lot and probably just stomp lane and go 5-0. and oh. But especially the higher the rank you go, you're going to get a lead if you're able to get good resets and uh, what's called tempo on the map. Well, I mean, ideally you're Fizz, you're an assassin, you want a lead. And it's going to be through shoving roaming or just solo killing your laner. Now we're trying to sweep. We're trying to make sure we're not walking on any wards. We see Urgot there. We're going to clear another ward there. There's no objectives up necessarily. They're just people stacking top. Which means this is like a free opportunity to side lane. And we know we beat Victor in the side lane really easily. He's backing away because he obviously knows that. Team takes a fight top side. I mean, that's just the chaotic nature of games in general. And I mean, since we team fight well. We're able to take another good team fight and just keep pushing our lead. Now we're shoving bots. It's a good thing for us. They end up taking another fight mid. Kind of random again since... I mean, in the end, if there's no objectives to fight for, there's no reason to necessarily fight, especially over there. But now we're just pushing for these inner towers. We shark Victor at long range. W auto EQW or it's R E auto WQ and then we Zonia so that way we don't tank too much mid tower damage there. But yeah, it's pretty standard stuff. Viz isn't necessarily a split pusher, but he's he needs the side lane to get an XP 
and gold lead. And since someone has to show bot for that wave, especially when he's ahead and has control of side lanes, that just makes team fights most likely 4v5s, and it puts Fizz in a better position to come from a flank, so there's just a lot of reasons to side lane. Ahead or behind, because that's your way back into the game. It's by side laning and soaking up XP. We have blue buffs, so we have uh, basically infinite mana. We end up taking wolves just because we have free time on the map. We're shoving in another wave bot because we're trying to look to contest that drag. Speed forward just a little bit. We shove in another wave bot. And when you shove in waves, it's either they decide for that objective fight or to collect the wave. It's a win-win. And with how everything's positioned, everything's chaotic. Ideally, now we're coming from a flank so we can get onto their backline really easily. We hit the plant and look who's right there. Oh, we get exhausted. But guess what? We have a lot of things to survive with. We have our E. And then we have Zonius. I flashed away there since in the end. I didn't want to get one shot, but uh, yeah, that's the whole premise of flanking. Twitch got hard engaged on, which is unfortunate. And if we replay the fight, how Twitch's side went is, guess what? They got hard engaged on. Like, there's nothing we can do about it. He ends up zoniazing, but I mean, it's just too late. And we get exhausted, so we can't actually deliver our damage like we want. We just flash away so we don't die, and then... Now we just regroup. We regroup. Their cane is dead, so we know that drag is actually doable for us, and that's soul, so we need to fight for it. And the goal here, since we don't have Twitch to shred, uh, what's it called Urgot, it's probably just going to be focusing the back line. Or trying to get to the back line somehow, which Shaco does. He ends up queuing forward. We end up just going for the Urgot since, in the end, we know. Yeah, in the end, we know that we actually have the damage to do so, especially with Void Staff. Victor flashes over. Since we have cooldown reduction, we E again, and then clean him up. That's our soul. We want to make sure no one's there. We take blue. And then we look for the reset, Rabadon's Death Cap. Typically, fourth or fifth item. Getting Rabadon's Death Cap will be a bigger spike over Lich Bane since you're having, or you have a lot of AP to work with. We have blue buffs, so we're just trying to shove in a side lane before we look to go Baron or end the game. And I mean, it's pretty self explanatory here. We take top inhib. We go Baron, recall one more time. We shove bot since that's the only lane with objectives there. And then after that, we take one last good fight. We protobelt onto Victor to take off his uh, Crown of the Shattered Queen shield. We just need to get a big shark off. In team fights, it's either use your art to one-shot squishy targets or create a lot of area for your team. It's just very versatile all around. I shark, I miss it, but I mean, it, the intention was there. We we're trying to hit Victor. We E onto the back line. We get exhausted yet again. We get suppressed. A lot of CC happens, which is what kills Fizz since he can't zone as or E when he's in the CC state. But I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory from there. We win the game. I mean, typically that's how the ranged lane matchups go anyways. All right. So welcome to the how to not get outscaled as Fizz section. We're playing against Kale, the champion that outscales. And I mean... Yeah, this is like the perfect champion to do it off of. So basically, it's just how to translate leads and pick up the pace of games. So, so Kale's a champion, especially with lethal tempo. Uh, she's actually pretty strong, levels 1 to 3. Because if you actually take extended long trades, she'll end up winning with the extra attack speed and E damage she gets. We try to E the minion and E the Kale at the same time, which is ideal. The wave is shoving towards us, we just have to respect it. And I mean, simply... I don't know why in the replay... You can't uh, lock the, the camera onto your champ. Basically, we just get shoved in. We try to E the minion and E her at the same time. But, I mean, it's a 
pretty self-explanatory of what happened. She just ends up shoving in the wave. Trust and believe. But, yeah. And now we're just safe farming under the tower. We can maybe look for mini trades, but it's going to be up until that level 3. Level 2, you can look for short trades, but look at that. The wave crashes. It's pushing back to her. We have minion lead, XP lead, and gold lead. We're going to take the auto W trade there. We hit level 3 from the minions dying by our minions. And just like that, she has to burn flash and then uh, recall back. Otherwise, we're just going to tower dive her. But this puts us in a spot where we could take a really good recall. Against these scaly champs, you just have to amp up the aggression early game and try to all in them. Burn a flash, that way your jungler can come. We have Scion Jungle, which is uh, interestingly... Yeah, that, that's uh, not too much of a... It's an interesting pick to say. It's not like a traditional Elise or Lee Sin where we could dive kill. And then, I mean, the wave is so stacked, we're just trying to look for a mini trade before we look for the recall. Reason being is, well, we actually damaged her, so that puts us in a better spot for when we actually do come back to lane. I fast forward a little bit too quickly, but basically the wave half crashes, doesn't even full crash under our tower, still pushes towards us. And whether if she looks for the minion, that's what we're looking at. If a minion of ours gets low, that means she wants to look up. So yeah, we take the trade when she tries to look for the minion. And basically, Graves TP's in. I mean, the wave state's good for him. He ends up picking up the kill. I probably could have just waited until my Q come back, came back up to actually finish off the kill. But, uh, I mean, him coming mid is fine. I, I don't mind it, especially with his wave being kind of good. Slow pushing back to him. It's a lead we both get. We share. Not really share, but the person who gets the assist gets 150 gold. The person who gets the kill gets 300. We crash the tower mid. Try to take a tower plating before we head off. We don't end up doing that, but I mean, it is what it is. And I mean, yeah, you can refer to the how to play the early, mid, and late game section. If your laner is playing really far back and uh, not farming, in which you could just take control of the lane, shove and roam 24-7, and then win your team the game through that way. So even if you're playing passive and trying to outscale, there's no true way to win in that aspect. I mean, sure you outscale, but by the time you do have your items to scale, you probably snowball the lane out of control and you have full control of objectives. So yeah, we're just slow pushing the wave back. The one where I was playing against Victor, that's one. That's the one where I just went aggressive and all in a lot. Or not that, but I had good wave states. I crashed the wave mid and then just ended up roaming all the time. Later down the line, after you get your lead from roaming and such, then you one shot the opposing mid laner. But basically, we look for the Q shark. I mean, it happens. It misses. Sion was trying to look for a gank, so I thought I would set it up easierly. Um, yeah, we're just slow pushing the wave. I mean, we just missed the shark, which is horrible. Kale gets movement speed from her W, which ends up helping a lot. You have to be careful with those champs. The champs who have mobility. Since that, those are like the key factors towards you missing your shark. We pan our camera bot level 4. We're level 6. And I mean, we don't even have shark. But since the plan is here, we could actually go for it. They just have to bait it in like that. If there was no plant there, we would probably just walk back mid. But since they're heavy trading bot, we pinged we were coming. They were heavy trading. We were able to get a kill there. E flash on a vein. And then pick up another one there. Oh, Kale is still farming mid, which is fine. Like, that's, those are the type of plays you want to take. Even without Shark, we were able to do that. So, imagine if we had Shark. We recall. Going the standard Luden's Rush build. For Lost Chapter and Wave Clear, since we're looking for the Shove and Roam. We clear that wave, and it's Rinse and Repeat. Shove and Roam. And Kale's ult level 1 is actually really long. So, if we do stay in lane, pop, make her use her ult... We can end up all inning her because, well, her ult isn't up. Our ult has, with CDR, comes up basically like a third, half. It's usually like a half to two thirds the way of Kale's. So we shove. Guess what we do next? We shove and roam. Even after she pings, it's just too late. They're getting engaged on. We're trying to look for Vayne. And I mean, yeah. Kaisa ends up having to heal, but... I mean, it is what it is. Kale gets a tower plating. She gets three minions, but we're just pushing the pace of the game. Botlin snowballed out of control. 
We're recalling since that's a cannon wave. We get tier 2 boots for the CDR. And uh, also the fact that uh, it gives us movement speed to actually roam and get into range to one-shot them easierly. So yeah, we just shove again. We have Infernal Advantage. There's a ward there, but... We're just waiting for our sweeper cooldown. And it's always the lanes that are heavy trading. You actually want to, uh, what's called, roam to a lot. Hecarim's hovering mid. I know that he's doing that as soon as Kale plays aggressive. I know that Hecarim is around by the way Kale is playing aggressive. I wait. 15, 20 seconds. I think Hecarim's still in the bush, by the way, because his vision ward's there. I still think he's waiting, so I'm just playing it safe. Playing it safe. Pretending like... Nothing's going to happen. I try to go in 15 seconds later, and then I end up dying. I mean, I literally thought he was going to wait there for 10 seconds, see I was backing off, and then just walk away. But he was actually clearing my Scions Raptor. So in that situation, I could have been a little bit more passive. But I mean, moments like those just happen. She's beating us in CS by a little bit. Sound collects the wave, ends up getting the kill on the kill. But the goal here every time is we're either solo killing kill mid, if possible, or shoving and roaming. That's the whole premise of how to pick up the pace of the game. And fighting over every objective we can before Kale can hit our items. They also outskill us in the aspect of Vladimir and then uh, Vayne. Those are two champs that outskill our comp. Alright, so basically, when K great, what was it? It was uh, Kale tried to kill Scion mid, Kale used her ult, and guess what we do? We pretend. Like we're trying to walk back, not trying to get poked, but in reality, we're just trying to all in her. She ends up flashing, which is fine, but since we have CDR, guess what? Our cooldowns come back up. As soon as we run back, we take an extended long trade. We don't want to get hit by that last tower shot and end up dying by the Hecarim. I think we were dead anyways because of the Hecarim. Maybe we could have lived if he wasn't there with Triumph. Nevertheless, literally, if Kale doesn't have ult, we are trying to all in her at all times. And the same thing goes for if a champ doesn't have flash and mobility for other lanes, whether that's like Orianna, Syndra, all these champions, Corky. There's going to be moments where you can just go in. We shove in the wave. Guess what we're trying to do? We're trying to play with our team. Our team is coming towards us at river. We flash Hecarim's ulti and we're just trying to survive. Q Zonius E. Onto Kale we go. And with stopwatch, with our E, how slippery Fizz is, we end up winning the fight at River. Now we're just pushing mid again. Taking a tower plating. Maybe two tower platings before we recall. The later the, down the line the game goes, the more likely you are to take more tower plating since you're going to have more power. Scion end up taking solo gold mid, which is a little bit of a selfish thing to do. Just kidding. I don't mind since tower platings were going to fall. But we end up getting Zonius here because Kale has ult. And I mean, we're playing against Hecarim Vayne. So, I mean, Zonius isn't bad. But Kale's going to ult. Or they're going to become untargetable. They're going to get shields. And we need a way to survive. That's going to be Zonius. Zonius is probably going to be better than Luden's rush here. We sweep. An objective is up, which means my jungler should indeed take it. Thought Nautilus was gonna actually run back. Trying to run away, but he tries to go for Thresh. We pick up Nautilus. We get drag. We try to go on Hecarim, which indeed, or in turn, he flashes. And then it's bot tower. So I mean it's literally taking all objectives, taking every winnable fight. It's winnable because we're ahead. We got our lead in the first place, but. And giving them no opportunity to breathe, whether that's objective bounty and trying to maintain our shutdown bounty if possible. We recall again, probably pick up Blasting One, and uh, we had bot. Since mid game, I told you bot lane goes mid, mid laner goes bot because side laning is better. We shark, we end up missing, so we back away. We don't know where Nautilus is. We just try to get 
her immortal shield bow. But since we have Zonius, we're able to survive that. And then finish off the vein. Zonius is just an essential against comps that have CC or a way of invulnerability and survivability. Just because we knew our, we had our team for backup, we took that fight. I know that if it was Nautilus Vayne against just me, I probably would have lost, especially after missing the shark. Even if we have the level lead and just, you know, kill lead. We crash bot, which means more solo XP and gold. And basically after this, we're just sweeping in and trying to recall. Pretty standard stuff, get Ludens. I fast forwarded a little bit too quickly. Basically, there's there was like a little fight, scrap top. They back away. I'm trying to head towards bot lane to try to save the tower, which I can't do. I'm 1v2. I know Graves is on his way. We end up getting past Nautilus, sharking the vein. Q shark is the best way. Q shark in general is the best way to get onto squishy targets if possible since it makes your shark a lot harder to dodge since it's animation canceling but uh yeah just generally speaking if you get that shark on that carry they're dead which in the end will take a lot of practice and time now we're just shoving in side lanes and i mean we really can't do anything to kill and I mean, it happens. No objectives are up. We're limit testing. Basically, what happens is uh, I just try to damage the Nautilus and back away. I thought I had Graves' back. Their whole team is bought. I end up getting caught. It just happens. It just happens. But the good news is Kale blows ult. And that ult is an essential for them to win that next fight. Which they can't win anymore. Since they just used Kale's R. And I got a good amount of burst on them, so they all have to recall. So if we fast forward here, drag is up, I'm up. They can't contest. Kale even knows that. They're pinging to take a rift to trade objectives, but it just, you know, it is what it is. And typically, Vlad outscales Fizz. But if Fizz has Ignite, Vlad has a level on us too. And plays his or plays against Vladimir's uh, Q passive correctly, along with his ult, he can actually win with Ignite, stopping his healing. Zoni is that. Back away because we don't want Vlad to get second portion of Q. Ian, WQ, Fat Finger the Flash, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You just have to know what to play around on Fizz to win these fights, which again takes a lot of game experience. Whether. That's dodging Vlad's empowered Q. Whether that's Eing Vladimir's R, all that stuff matters. Check the VOD. See where you can improve on. So ideally dodging or waiting out Vlad's empowered Q. We take blue buff as we path towards bots. And I mean this is literally how not to get outscaled. We're 21 minutes in the game. We are about to have four dragons. We're impacting every fight. Oh man, the Zonia is there as killer. The Zonia is there as killer. Yeah, should have expected that. But good thing this has a lot of mobility and can look for those dives. And then just taking initiative everywhere. Now we're pushing bot with Baron minions. Trying to take that inner tower. I'm pretty low, so I don't want to look for another fight. My team's pretty healthy. Thrush try, tries to go for a YOLO play. Scion's trying to hit the two towers with his ulti. Now we're just pushing in mid with our uh, wave clear. And then now we're just sweeping, pathing our way towards top. Just trying to hover Graves to see if he went to a fight. He doesn't. Drag is up soon. We pick up Void Staff since in the end, Witsend, Lockets, they all have natural forms of MR. They're fighting mid. Kale's the one who's fed. So we want to focus either Vayne or Kale. We shark the Nautilus. Nothing we can do about that. Now we're playing front to back. Our E's back up. We flop away. I mean, Fizz is just really slippery all around. 
If he is frontline and getting focused, he has his Ian Zonia, so in the end, they just end up wasting a lot of time while your team can just focus uh, whoever needs to be focused. We take Chem Tank Soul, and I mean, basically, your win percentage with Chem Tank Soul is like 90%. Let's be real, guys. Pretty broken elder or soul. We're taking a recall since we're low. And it's just grouping it up one time and then closing it out from here. Since Chem Tank basically guarantees you win team fights, without a doubt, you can't lose team fights because you're like 1.5 of what your team is. Has to get the ult there. More cleanups. We're trying to shove in mid and top because bot lane's naturally shoving with uh, super minions. And basically, with the man advantage, we're trying to take every fight. Just flopping to whoever's closest. Hecarim. Trying to get an AoE flop onto Vlad and Hecarim. We end up just getting one. Kill ults, which is pretty massive. Get the one shot burst on Vladimir. Kale kind of outscales in a way, but now it's just too late. Like I said, if you're able to roam, solo kill kill when you find opportunities to, I mean, it's just massive. They got W auto and then flash away at the end. Let's see. I mean, we're focusing Kale. She's level 15, which is like pretty massive. Bro, I just auto and flash. Oh, I flash Kale's AoE portion of her E, so I live. And then Triumph heals. And after that, from there, it's just uh, we recall one more time after taking Baron. We pick up our last components of whatever items we buy, and then we group it up and end it there. And there's not much else to say. It's just one more team fight. It's just one more team fight where we have Chem Tank Soul, and then we can just end it. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically the premise of how to not get outskilled. It's finding ways to win the laning phase if possible, but even if they're playing really far back and safe, like this is against champs like Corky, even Syndra, like all these mage oriented, farm oriented champs, you could just shove in Rome with all that priority and it'll be too late. By the time they get their first component of their item, you probably already took bot tower and uh, you'll probably have a lead yourself to actually take them on within the mid game. But yeah, and you're just stacking objectives. So it's going to be up to you to pick up the pace of the game. All right, so now going over how to play the early, mid, and late game on Fizz. So typically, especially into these melee lanes, I mean, you're probably going to have some pressure on them early on. We're playing against a Kali. Some people consider this a hard lane. It's more medium difficulty matchup since, well, if you play the early lane, or if you play the early waves correctly, you should be able to find yourself in a favorable spot. So we started a W. Akali's pre-level 6 is weak. So every time she goes for a minion, we jab her with W. This could work the same with Silas, even Zed, these type of champions. But uh, some other champions that you play against, maybe like Talon, you actually have to get shoved in. Every time Akali goes for the minion, we just jab her with uh, W. She started Dark Seal 3 potions. We're backing away because of her passive auto. And it's just building waves. That's the goal. And now we're trying to go for a mini trade if she does look for a minion. We're trying to double flop with E auto W. And we're stacking a pretty big wave. It's going to crash, but when it crashes... Oh, we actually do get in range. We pretend like we're going for the minion. We double E auto W. When it does crash, that gives you time to get a deep ward. So you don't die by a gank. And at this current time, you're probably going to be up in CS. Wave is pushing back to you, but yeah, you can't cheat a recall since you don't have a, enough gold for anything. But every time you play for the shove, you're always going to have level advantage. And I mean, not much is happening. If Talon and Kindred fight at river, I'm panning my camera. And we're just playing it slowly but surely. Since that was our last corrupting potion. And a key fundamental of Fizz is every time you get hit 
Her throne, their most important ability, whether that's a call the E, Q, or even her last portion of her R, uh, you want to dodge with your E. Will you just go for a cheat? It's going to crash under our, our tower. But we're not going to lose many minions. We got all the XP and maybe lost one minion from it crashing under the tower. So it's all around just uh, good. But it puts us in a better spot. Early game, the goal is, if they miss position really hard, is to get a solo kill or just get a really good recall. So, I mean, we'll take that win. Now we're slow pushing it back. Akali lost three minions compared to our one, so we're up in XP. Dodge the E. Try to E her Q. Now we're just autoing on the way out. We have corrupting potions, so we know we can trade. We can take more aggressive trades. And we're building a wave. And basically right here, she steps up a little bit too far for the cannon minion, which we knew she was going to go for. We try to flop onto her, get a kill. It would have been worth if it was a one for one. J4 shows mid. And then in the end, we just look to recall. So basically we recall, we come back on the map. The score is still 0-0, but we asserted so much pressure, not even solo killing our laner once. At least for the jungle matchup. And look at that. Akali's at base. Since the fight's within our jungle, we influence the fight first. Clean up to J4, and I mean... Fizz basically just controls all 2v2s. Every 2v2, every jungle fight that happens, every major 3v3 bot... I mean, just in general, Fizz is good at fighting. But basically, Akali's trying to punish me for going for the cannon. We're slow pushing it back. And when you turn level 6, that's when you're able to take either really good all-ins onto whoever your laners are or uh, what's it called? You're able to roam a lot more efficiently. But yeah, we're just slow pushing a wave. We're getting it nice and big. Going one for one here is worth. There's not much else we could do on the map. We try to go for a mini trade, and basically your goal is to go for a mini trade into all in. So, Kali's level 5, she used all of her gap closers. Level 5 to level 6, we're just autoing her. All of our stuff's on cooldown. We end up getting a kill going one for one, but she loses all those minions. J4 has to clean it up. And uh, it's just all around worth, since we're going to have the XP and gold lead. Going one for one on a stacked wave tire dive. You have to take those. So yeah, basically now going for Pryo 24-7's key. You want to always have shove post 6. 9 times out of 10. Because you could do something on the map if you have it shoved in. And uh, yeah, we missed the E. We tried to go for an E when she was shrouded. Which is unfortunate. But we have to be careful about using our E. Since if we use our E, she could all in us with her ultimate. And our ulti is not up, so we have to be really careful. She gets the E on us. Goals to just go for a mini trade. She knows we have no R. Galio's hovering. And this is the type of chaotic games Fizz likes. Except in this instant, it's 4v2. So, it's not a the most ideal fight. We try to... Yeah, we did. We actually tanked the W that was going to kill Galio. And we sharked the wave. So that way we would collect the CS. And they wouldn't be able to push as many tower platings. And in the process... Yeah, we can't. We can't. <laughs> we can't. They're too healthy on HP. We maybe possibly could have set something up. But uh, yeah, it just it didn't work. So ideally here, I was thinking about recalling. But since Akali has shutdown, going, uh, shutdown gold, going one for one is just really worth. I saw Galio was pathing mid. So I thought it would... Take a little minute before she'd go for the dive. She goes for the dive, and then we go one for one. It's worth if they have shutdown gold. It's always worth to go one for one if they have shutdown gold, since they give you more gold in the end, and then the Galio just ends up cleaning up my wave. It's a one for one, but I mean, it's something we'll take. So going back onto the map, we're alive. They're looking for a fight bot. We're crashing the wave mid. And every time your laner roams, it's free tire platings and free XP gold. 
So Akali shows back on to the map. We go for a mini trade here. Dodger Q. And since we have Shark, we want to be doing something on the map. Whether that's tire diving the Akali or looking for a roam. As we see, Orin's full. And uh, Jin is recalling. So there's not much we could do there. We're heavy trading on to mid. Going for a short bursty trade into all in. And this even goes for range lanes. Kindred's mid. We end up just escaping. And I mean, that's just the pro of playing Fizz. With all of his built-in mobility. Or all of uh, her built-in mobility. With all of his built-in mobility. So basically, how you land a shark is they either go for a minion. You catch them off by... Okay. I, I land the shark, right? How you land your sharks is basically... It's when you go for a minion, they try to harass you, which means they'll hold still for a second to throw their ability at you. When they go for a minion, that's another time to throw skill shots or try to go for engages. And uh, what's it called? When they least expect it, but like typically, basic rule of thumb is, is when you're going for a minion or when they're going for a minion, you're going to throw your shark. She thinks I'm just trying to get the cannon minion. I end up getting the cannon minion anyways but it catches her off guard since she's trying to focus on harassing me when i try to go for the cannon so yeah we just get a nice all in we see a fight happening at river kindred just flashes away but we're just ending up what we're ending up doing is uh having more control than the akali on the map we crash another wave and then look for the reset again it's preseason, so i'm kind of testing out builds and such i was uh testing out proto Graves is taking a fight bot, which he uh, is going to lose. But good thing Drag isn't up. We take another. Uh... Good thing Drag isn't up. What we're doing is AFK pushing mid when your laner isn't there since they'll end up losing a wave. We know Akali's going to come mid lane. Since she, do she just showed bot, we flash her R, shark her on the way out, and ignite. And basically, yeah, we're dead here since we have no flash or uh, anything up. I was ideally trying to recall. But to relook at that fight, our E's on cooldown as of right now. She catches us with the E and then ulties. Basically, since we're able to get ourselves a lead in items, even though we got hit with everything. We still win. And then it's one for one since uh, J4 was uh, hovering mid. That's the pro of playing champs like Fizz and Yon. When you're able to find yourselves early game leads like this, uh, it's hard for you to get punished. Since your kit has a lot of guaranteed ways to get your damage off. Basically, before objective fights at drag, what you want to do is shove in mid first. Graves ends up face checking a bush, unfortunately. So a fight pans out a little bit too soon. How you want to play fights is you want to come from the side anyways. Orin's trying to block us, but since Orin is blocking us from getting the engage off onto them, our team is able to collapse onto their back line, and then we're able to play front to back end uh, win the team fight there. And I mean, Kindred gets shut down on me, which sucks. Talon's still bot side taking tower, which is odd. But if we just look back at the team fight, we would have won that if Talon was there. Basically, how you want to play these fights out is either you want to shove in, crash mid, or bot. Come from the side of the fights. That way you can flank onto whoever's their most fed, which is Jin slash Kindred. And uh, Orin was trying to block me from trying to shark onto their backline, right? But since he was doing that, he was leaving. All right, we got a replay. Basically, when you're able to get shoves off, you're able to come from sides of the fight. They're trying to peel away from Galio, but... Since the Orin isn't blocking the Ezreal's projectiles here, we end up winning the fight anyways. And we're, after that, just able to play front to back. Since Ezreal's getting his damage off. But typically the tanks will be positioned right here and their carries will be in their back line. You come from the side right here. You can get uh, nice flanking gauges. Same thing works for bot if you're shoving bot. But yeah, that's that. 
That's how you want to play the mid-game team fights, at least. And drag is still up. No one's taking it. Talon gets a sneak kill mid. And basically, we take drag, so... The mid laner, what they want to be, or where they want to be, is towards the lane which in turn the objectives are. So we want to be top lane since Rift is up. Since Graves, in theory, should uh, be matching TPs with Orin. Basically, we're matching the Orin here. We're trying to fight for Rift if there's an objective to fight for. And basically, after you push in waves top or bot, you want to be looking towards that river to try to look for picks or sweeping their wards with your sweeper. So basically, yeah, we're in shoving top. And uh, since he's shoving top, trying to get the wave there, we see a fight breaks out right here. They hit the plant. Guess where we're at? We're at a perfect side. We're at a perfect side angle slash flank where we can engage on them in an area that's hard to react to. So we get the shark onto... Jin Kindred flashes over the wall, and uh, we're able to pick up two more kills here. Kindred ults, but you already know what's going to happen next. We pick up two kills here, and now, guess what? They're coming late to the fight. The J4 and uh, Orin. We have no mana or HP, which is why they want to look for this fight, but they're too late. I end up dying, but in the end, it's going to be a numbers advantage for us. Or it's going to be a two for one. They got my shutdown gold, which sucks. But in the end, I mean, it's a four for one trade. So it's worth. And we're able to take mid tower. You always want to be fighting wherever the objectives are. So after we take mid tower, we path towards rift. And with good team fighting. Uh, yeah, we just get objectives, whether that's tower or rift. Team fighting is everything, especially in... Uh, yeah, no, every rank, every rank. Because what I've noticed is, all right, we'll just go back onto the map. We're at a top side here since Graves is going for bot wave or we're trying to go mid for a pick on Jin. Basically, team fighting is everything, especially the lower the rank you are, team fighting is everything. That's what wins you games in iron, silver, gold, since that's all you guys do. So you have to really look at what you're doing in team fights, whether you're trying to focus their fed carry, which is what we want to do in this team comp, Try to go for the Kindred or Jin, Or you want to peel back for your fed carry. Which he's not fed enough for us to play front to back. So yeah, we're just sweeping. Every time you shove in a wave, you can do something in River. Or try to look for picks. So yeah, we're shoving in another wave mid. Pretty simple stuff. Talon goes in too deep, gets caught. And basically nothing really happens as of right now. We're just clearing a wave mid because there's no objectives to fight for. Unless we're forcing invades and such. But other than that, like, we're just trying to look for picks if they overstep. And you're only able to do this if you have a lead on Fizz. Because if you don't, uh, what's it called? You're just useless. Or you can't really provide much. We try to look for the Q Shark, but they're on the tanks. We don't want to go for tanks. We want to go for the Squishies. They're trying to get a pick onto Galio. We'll start slowing down the fight so we can actually view it. Galio gets three-man invade. And then what we're trying to do is get a Megalodon to create a lot of space for the team. We E-flash onto their back line. And guess what we're trying to do? Get to their most important targets. We're not trying to focus the J4 Orin. We just wanted a Megalodon to create space. And now we're just picking them off one at a time. After we take down their most fed carries. Because, you know, the carries are the ones who do the most damage. And that's how you win team fights. Or that's how you play team fights. Another way, at least. I told you about flanks. If we review that, we were actually. We we're actually uh, we were actually with the team here. So we we're technically playing front to back. We just got a really good shark off there. We could have played front to back, or we could have just played uh for the flank onto their back line. I feel like getting a megalodon there would have helped a lot more since uh our teammates actually hold weight with damage. Like I'm not the only one gonna damage their back line. It's gonna be Talon, because he's an assassin, and Graves also has his ulti, so. 
I could actually afford to play front to back here. But if no one can deal damage to the carry champions like Jin or Kindred, I'd probably start the fight. Okay. And on top of that, you have to factor your engage. We have Galio as engage. If we didn't even have Galio as engage, uh, what I'd end up doing is always coming from the side of fight. So I'd probably maybe come from here. I wouldn't be with the team here. I would be trying to get a flank from here, trying to get a flank from here, and I wouldn't start the fight from uh, here. We're playing front to back because Talon has damage, Graves has damage. We have damage on their carries and it's other than me but if it was only me then i would be coming from flanks but anyways after the team fight after the team fight happens pretty it's pretty self-explanatory we take a tower mid we look for that inner tower towards inhib and since we have zonias we're able to play up like this make them want to come to us since they think it's a pick onto me but we have a lot of survivability with zonias we're able to clean them up one at a time and past the 20 minute mark is when you want to take inhib since you can contest Baron at that point. Now we look for the reset. They're throwing. If they are, if your team wants to fight after you take in objectives and want to just reset, we're Ring right here so that way we just zone them from actually wanting to chase our team. But typically, if your team is fighting after you take the objective and want to just recall on the map, you just have to let them die. Ping them away, but that's all you can do. Since you're the ones with shut down gold, so yeah, you don't want to give those away. Our goal is to reset before the next drag fight starts. It would have happened if uh, Talon just recalled, though. That's unfortunate, but that's what happens. You just have to recall and come back on the map with full resources gonna fast forward not much can be done here you might be able to look for a pick but that's that's about it like literally they get objective bounty if we all recalled at the same time after taking inhib we would have been able to fight for that drag we would have had enough time now we're going for picks one at a time since we're far in ahead after a pretty nicely played early game we look for the akali Another pick there, and since Kindred's dead for 27 seconds, we're looking for Baron. Also, yeah, Akali's down, which is a uh, side news. We take Baron, no one's there to contest. We're trying to take Baron, and basically, Fizz is the one who wants to be over the pit trying to fight. I was actually there at Baron because I didn't want my team to tank too much damage. They don't have smite, so I know it's pretty much secured. But basically, if you're fed in ahead, especially if their carries are up and you know they're gonna step up to check the Baron, you don't want to you don't want to be at the Baron fight since you don't help take drag as quickly as other carries, whether that's Talon or Ezreal Graves. So you want to just be looking for picks on anyone who's trying to Baron. And before you fight, start the Baron fight, you have your sweeper. So you can sweep around for wards. They're going to be walking into places where there's no wards. This is our blue ward. I could have been standing right here. And if the Jin, Akali, or Kindred walked up here, I would have been able to get a one shot off. Since they can't face check when there's, there's uh, no vision. So anyways, yeah. We get Baron. We look to go bot. Basic premise is before. Basic premise is before you look to fight, you want to shove out a wave or two, so that way they have to react to the wave there. Our team is taking a bad fight. I already see Talon is dead. And now we're just panicking. We're trying to walk back. So disorganized. We shark the J4 and we're just trying to fight back or run away. Since there's four people there. We E away. Dodge. Jin's W, re-engage onto Kindred, and with our natural mobility and survivability, we're just able to kite our way out, buy our team some time, and actually get kills. That's why CDR is so good on Fizz. CDR is so good on Fizz because it lets your E come back on cooldown easier Lee, and uh... Yeah. 
with Zonius, it's really hard to focus Fizz, especially in the mid to late game since you have a lot of CDR. So now we just take tower and then we look to reset. Since we don't want to give our shutdown bounty, shutdown bounty is massive. You just never want to give your shutdown bounty. Or if you're going to give it, at least try to give it to their uh, tank support or whoever is the most useless. Since if it goes to Jin, Akali, or Kindred, they actually have fighting power and can find their way back into the game. And basically, yeah, we're sweeping as we're taking the Raptors. And basically, if we look right here, we're not really worried about Orin since that's not who we deal damage to. We deal damage to him, but ideally, we want to find ourselves in the spots where we can actually get towards these squishy targets. A J4 EQs, so the R misses, but in the end, yeah, we just play towards that Talon fight and then pick up the Orin. It would have been more ideal if we could have uh, gotten the Kindred. We wanted to participate within that fight. Focusing whoever's closest. Graves dies. In the end, I should have backed off here. I thought my E would have been enough burst. But, again, it's just the sloppiness and the nature of uh, solo queue. Talon's not grouped up. He's shoving in side lanes. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate. I have to give my shutdown gold. But, oh, what a bummer. It just is what it is. Teammates don't fight as groups. The only time you really are most likely going to be as a group group is going to be around objectives, though. Team's fighting for top inhib. Inhibs are objectives. That's the thing. So us grouping is actually the most optimal, which we're just not doing. You can't control what everyone else does. You can only ping what you want your team to ideally do. If you want to see how more of a stompy laning phase looks like, go to my other recent fizz guide. Uh, what's it called? It's my other like two and a half hour one. And then just skip to the section where it's uh, the one against Yasuo. That's the one. And basically while we're walking through their jungle, we're sweeping their wards. We want to make sure they're face checking with no vision at all times. And after you face check vision, you look for the next fighting area. Kindred hops over the wall since he has no vision of who's at his wolves. That's the pro sweeping. And we shark J4 on the way out. He thought we could trap us in. And it's pretty self-explanatory from there. We just ends up pushing in. Taking all their inhibs. Since they have no towers left, super minions are going to crash. But now we're just trying to look for the end. We flop towards the Jin, Always trying to focus the most important target. Recalling and basically yeah, we just take Baron and end the game And that's ideally what should have happened. I think we might have just ended they're chasing the Ezreal Focus front to back whoever's closest we get the Akali off a of one shot We get the Akali off a of one shot and then from there I think we just transition towards wanting to fight and looking for the end we don't opt to go Baron since super minions are already crashing. Eing in. Sharking away. WQ. And it's not always about going for the one shot, but just landing your shark on whoever's the most important target or creating enough space for your team to uh, do as they please. But yeah, that's Fizz for you. I try to pick a game where it wasn't just a stomp within the lane, but... Uh, just a game where we had a lot of pressure control and controlled team fights. All right, guys. So to cover every matchup there is in the game, at least for mid lane, starting with Ari, actual pretty medium difficulty matchup. Ari is a champ that has a lot of mobility and, uh, well, mobility plus harass, but she is prone to getting bursted within the lane. Uh, as for the way you should play the wave, level one is just you try to eat the first three minions. 
it is very much dependent on how she plays it if she fast pushes it so that way it would crash into your tower quickly but if you if you hit level two at the same time or you hit level two first you want to look for a mini trade and uh yeah typically at level three you can depending on what she starts if she starts corrupting potion she doesn't get the extra eight what was it like 80 hp from duran ring which means she is uh super prone to getting all in so at level three if you can get a q engage start auto w into e you could probably just chase her down the long lane and by the time she's close to her tower your q will come back up off cooldown assuming that you start with q uh if she's a skilled re player and ease you mid q animation you might have to wait for her to try to go for a minion or when you think she's going to harass you going to that minion, double E on top of her and start your trades off with E. But other than that, post six mid range sharks are ideal since Ari can just ult away from Megalodon. So, I mean, Ari's very prone to getting bursted, but um, yeah, it's literally just that it's you have to get into range to do so. And if you're able to E her charm, obviously, easier said than done. You automatically win the lane since that's her key component to kite you out and land her skill shots. Anyways, onto the Akali lane. Uh, ideally, was the hardest counter to Fizz, but now, I mean, her early game is really weak. Like, pre-level 6. Her pre-level 6 is so weak, you can start W. Every time she goes for a minion, jab her. <clears throat> jabber with the auto attack there but i mean basically how the wave should go or the lane should go is levels one to three you should always have minion advantage since you're going to be w'ing her every time she goes for a minion thinning out the wave with your normal auto attacks they're going to be empowered if you just jabbed her with w uh you're going to hit level two first if she steps up you're going to double flop onto her auto w should proc electrocute and if that happens uh it depends what she starts. If she starts Duran Ring 2 potions or Dark Seal 2 potions, she's very much so kill a bull if she doesn't just give pressure to you, like completely backs away towards her tower. Uh, D Shield's the only start, which uh, it's actually hard to all in her with the HP and uh, extra HP it gives if you harass. But anyways, so you slow push it, it crashes under her tower, if she's all inable, nice. If she's not, take a recall at 350 gold. And that just gives you control of the lane, really. Like, you get to set the pace of the lane. Whether that's you slow push, crash it under the, her tower, help your uh, jungler at Scuttlecrab if they're fighting over that. But if they're not, look for a quick cheater recall. 350 gold, 400 gold for Duran Ring. Or it could be either one, Dark Seal or Duran Ring. Come back to lane. The wave should be on your side. If not, if it crashes, so be it. Overall, you're just going to have a lot of control. And uh, as for post level 6, she can E away from your ulti, by the way. So, you have to, want, you have to land mid-range sharks or ult when she's going for a minion at mid-range. Or she's trying to harass you when you're going for a minion. Just be really tricky with how you play your R's because that's going to be key. That's going to reveal her in her shroud so she's actually burstable. And I mean... Yeah, she's going to try to E your E, your E too. So that's pre-6. Pre-6, she's going to try to E your E. And post-6, she's going to try to E your art. But if you land your art, you're most likely going to uh, get the one shot off. And I've noticed, especially within low elo, Akali, it's actually pretty favorable for her, especially mid-game. But they'll actually rush like MR since they're scared of Fizz. In that case, just play for the prio. Tank her Q damage, uh, just jab her here and there. You're going to have full lane control. Just shove and roam. And then that'll make her team fighting a lot weaker. If she gets like Merc Treads over her original Magic Pen Boots. As for the Aikshin lane, new champion added. One of Fizz's hard matchups. Since, well, it's kind of like Lucian. Harasses you. Woo, can take Exhaust, can take Barrier. And it's just such a pain to deal with, honestly. It's one of those lanes where you want to be half CS if possible. Action's all inable. If he starts... D oh, uh, another note is that Action rushes uh, Wit's End, which makes it even hard to burst him. And gets that extra shielding. It's just rough. But 
Action obviously shoves you in. It's just a given. Shoves in waves, cues the waves, cues the wave, and tries to hit you at the same time as the wave. But realistically speaking, you're going to get shoved in. Just take it. Try to be half CS and uh, don't take too much damage until it crashes into your tower. Try to farm a couple of minions. And uh, I'm trying to frame it like how to say that. Should I cut this? I'll cut it. Basically, when it crashes into your tower, depending on how fast he pushes it, you might be level two in which you could double flop onto him auto W just as like a mini trade. He'll get a shield. It'll basically it basically won't do a lot of damage. That's fine. But when you hit level three and it crashes towards under your tower, huge wave and it's pushing back towards him. That's where you want to look for the Q auto attack W E trades in which uh, what's it called. It's after you double E auto W. So basically because he takes Durham blade, it gives him extra HP over like sustain from if he had more potions, he's only going to have one potion, which means that you win in mini trade situations. So if you mini trade him, he's going to have to eventually use the potion and you're going to have a little bit more healing than him. It's kind of hard because especially in lower ranks, they, they miss position. It's, it's, it's not going to go as formatted as uh, higher ranks, but obviously he's shoving towards you, which means that you can get your jungler's assistance. But if he gives no assistance, it's going to be mini trade into trying to all in him. That's going to be the goal if it's 1v1. But realistically speaking, it is doable up until he gets a lot of MR from Witsend. And then it kind of becomes a whole... Yeah, it becomes a really bad uh, situation in general. But typically, I mean, if possible, you can influence the 2v2s better depending on what your jungler and their jungler look like. And uh, yeah, that's the action lane. It's kind of like Lucian. As for Anivia, the key is uh, you're going to get shoved in, crash under tower. And the goal is to trade at level 3. Level tr 3, especially when she's deep within the lane, you can all in her really easily. And the goal, pre-6, is you have to take out her egg. Don't go for mini trades. I mean, you can go into a mini trade, then go for an all in. But the goal is to start with a Q engage. Auto it's Q auto W if possible. She can Q you mid Q animation, which is annoying, but... Just be tricky with it. You might have to lead off with your E. But basically, the premise is you want to just auto her down the long lane. She's going to shove towards you. She's going to be pushed up. Just long trade her throughout um, what's it called the lane. You have to get out her egg. When you get out her egg, any mid to long range shark post six should be able to kill her. Um, yeah, so basically, that that's basically the whole premise of it. To win that lane in particular your 2v2 should be stronger since anivia scales towards that mid to late game and uh yeah i mean literally it's uh it's a lane where after she has no q or e she doesn't have any damage she doesn't have anything to work with so if you're if you q onto her she cues you as a response that's fine you can follow that up with a e plop down for the slow auto w auto 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 down the long lane and once she's at her like near her tower your q should be back off cooldown and then re-engage or fake it out like you're walking back to the minions but your q comes back up dash back onto her these long extended trades that's what you want especially when she starts d ring and you have more sustain with your corrupting potion the annie lane typically she'll harass you uh yeah, she'll harass you. There's two ways this lane can go. It's either she plays for Pryo completely, in which she wants to hit level two first, and then uh, what's it called fast push the wave to your tower, in which you'll hit level three first, and then bounce the wave back out. When the wave, if she fast pushes like quickly, autoing the wave constantly, queuing, just take the first three minions. Let it push towards you. It's going to crash under tower. You're going to hit level three. As soon as you hit level three, Q engage onto her. Auto Q auto W E plop down auto 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 Q again because it should be off cooldown by the time you auto three or four times. It literally should be your flash right then and there. Even through the stun. I mean, it's not long enough of a duration for you, her to stop you. Um, yeah, literally. And then post six, she's actually really easy to shark. You have to be in mid range since she could E for movement speed to try to dodge your shark. But other than that, it should be free load there. Now, if she like slow pushes, meaning she last hits the minions, you're going to hit level two first. 
when you hit level two first you're gonna double flop onto her auto w have control of the lane because she's actually really weak early on and level th three you actually might be able to look for a dive but if not you're just gonna get a good cheetah recall stack the wave crash it either help at scuttle crab cheetah recall back and i mean it's so pretty self-explanatory from there post six i mean you're just landing a mid-range shark and all landing her um or you're stacking waves and then uh looking elsewhere on the map whether that's a top dive bot dive or just a jungle fight so yeah that's uh the any lane for you it's pretty easy honestly let's see the azir lane one of those lanes where it's actually pretty rough i'm not gonna lie it's pretty rough because sure he is burstable but it's actually hard to get into range in the first place it's mostly a high elo thing in low elo it should be no problem in fact i feel like you could quite easily e his r but his w mixed with q and constant harass is so annoying my advice is if he is queuing forward get your jungler to gank he can't queue again it's, it's on like a four or five second cooldown so when he queues forward he can't queue back in e so it's an easy gank there but typically it's going to be trying to get into a range of him is going to be the problem and he has his soldiers to actually farm for him so it's a whole pain there post six if you're able to get a long range shark it should be yeah i can't even say that because he takes barrier exhaust you have to burn it he's gonna slow push it crash it and basically you're playing this like a standard mage lane try to go for short bursty trades into all ins uh to uh, basically beat him in the hp game but realistically speaking how you do win this lane is your 2v2s should be stronger because uh, azir doesn't spike up until one item plus which means that you should be taking control of the map with your jungler he should be coming mid or if he's not coming mid you should be able to dominate that scuttle fight and just i mean generally speaking yeah he takes some time to scale so as long as you're not taking too much damage within the lane your cs count might be horrific but um it should be very much doable to win that 2v2 anyways uh brand lane it's i mean it's pretty standard mage lane i'm being honest it's pretty standard legit just the standard mage lane he shoves you in you can do extended long trades onto him you try to e his most important ability which is uh his q most of the time because that's the stun and i mean so forth it's literally just he's not that common either so i wouldn't even stress too much about it so this lane cassiopeia is a 60 40 meaning 60 percent chance like it's more favored towards her just by a tad bit typically cassiopeia is q reliant if she doesn't land her q she doesn't deal damage whatsoever now what people hate not really is her r or q i mean it's q if you don't know how to tether properly in that case dodging might be something you want to improve on which comes with time and just looking at your review to see how you're dodging whether that's side to side how you're changing your patterns at the last second all that jazz walking backwards walking forwards to dodge your q but i mean typically speaking her q should be in theory semi easy to dodge so it's dodging her q that's the first step um her w is her annoying part and basically you have to play around like being able to what's it called it's all in the short trades or not short trades but she takes conquer and barrier that's like the most standard cassiope page which is really good for the 1v1s she will outscale you taking extended long trades only works if you dodge her q because that's all her damage right and her w lets you, stops you from using e and then that's she'll w and then try to q you right so basically you have to just dodge her q and if you're able to dodge her it's so bad but that's literally the truth of it dodge her q and dish out your damage you will uh succeed within the lane but uh mid-range shark or long-range shark she's very immobile so jungler gank of course is really good at the same time you can actually solo kill her if she only has barrier or exhaust within the lane but you just have to play it correctly um yeah she has to burn it she has to burn it before you look for the all-in or like uh there has to be something chaotic within the map like whether that's a fight for scuttle crab where she burns her flash and exhaust or uh she gets ganked mid because Within the isolated 1v1, I'm telling you, it's like 60-40. There's a 60% chance she can win, 40% chance you'll win. Because 
if she plays it skillfully, in theory, she should win. But you're literally relying on the fact that you will dodge her Q to win this lane. So, I mean, yeah, she's a mobile. She needs to get, like, pressured in some way. And if you if your jungler isn't coming, you're probably within a low enough rank to where you can win 1v1 off her misplays. You see what I'm saying? So, anyways, on to the next lane. Yes. Cho'Gath lane is actually pretty common and popular. Cho'Gath's early game is actually pretty weak. In fact, uh, what's it called? He's very much so all inable, especially if he's pushing waves with his E. Um, Q auto W E. You're gonna try to. He's gonna try to W then Q to silence you, so that way you can't E. But you have to like uh, position with your Q. And just honestly walking around to dodge his Q. E onto him for the slow and then auto just all around. He's going to shove the lane in. It's going to be in a favorable spot for you to chase him down the long lane. Uh, 2v2 should be easy for you guys to win. Whether whoever your jungler is. Whether that's for scuttle, drag fight, rift fight. All that stuff is very much so doable. But in my opinion, Cho'Gath will outscale you in the aspect that he'll tank damage really easily. And you won't be able to one shot him later on. Even if he's going full AP. Everfrost, Ludens, whatever he's trying to go. Because he's going to get HP within the build. And uh, just general tankiness. Some of them even rush Merc Treads. But if they're going full tank. That means you could pressure other sides of the map. Rather than just playing one for 1v1. Where uh, he's just going to tank all your damage. The Quirky Lane is actually a really popular one now. And uh, well. It's one where it's kind of like a ticking timer where you have to beat him early on otherwise he'll outscale you but or i mean at least towards that mid to late game team fights at least but he has mobility his w which is what draws people off and honestly you're gonna have to just like watch replays basically what you're gonna do is q auto w or qw because well you can't he's gonna w away as soon as you q onto him just you're going to do that. He's going to W away. You're going to walk back to the wave. And as soon as he steps back up, you're going to double E flop onto him. Be really tricky with how you engage things. You might even E, double E on top of him, auto W, or just double E, W, right? He's going to W away. It's so obvious, right? Within the lane. After he uses his W, he either can't step up for 12 seconds in which you could slow push the wave and crash it under his tower, then roam, or... He's going to step up thinking that that's your mobility and you're going to have another mobility source, whether that's your Q or whether that's your E. So typically how the lane plays out is he's going to slow push it, crash it towards your tower, level three on the way pushing back to him. You should be able to uh, look for these short bursty traits since he's going to try to run away. But if you can get those extended traits, you will definitely win since he starts tier the goddess two potions or longsword refillable anyways post six he can play a game where he doesn't want to engage on at all he's like hands off like literally he's just gonna r from far away distances in that case you could just clear the wave and literally roam have sweeper sweep the bush so that way he has to face check eventually and when he face checks guess what you're gonna do you're gonna throw your long range shark and all in him but yeah it's really hands off you can that if it's really hands off if they just stand at their tower and then are from far away distances that just gives you a timer just to roam roam 24 7 you're going to be first there to the roam and you always want to be roaming to the lanes that are heavy trading since that will uh basically guarantee the kill if they're full hp with all summoner spells they're obviously going to turn that on you especially if it's a tower dive so i recommend roaming to heavy trading lanes or jungle impact literally if he's playing that the game if he's playing that farm game the game is literally 4v5 up until like the 15 to 20 minute mark up until he hits one item so i mean literally it's uh a lot of control over the map anyways diana lane i mean diana in a 1v1 situation typically is probably more favored towards her in a way since she has her shield to negate your damage um what's it called she shoves the wave and then cues you at the same time, typically. And I mean, all around, she'll have prior since her natural kit has more wave clear than you. I will say that. But how you win this lane is she has no mobility. So she's really prone to getting ganked. Um, but other than that, 
post six, if you're able to get max range shark, Q wants her auto W. You have to get her bone plating off because sometimes they take resolve. Get her bone plating off, just two W E away, whatever that may be. Shark her at max range. Q auto W. Auto 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 Q because your cooldown will come back up. Basically, you're just saving your E for when she R's, in which um she won't have the she won't if she doesn't have her R, that's like the majority of her damage in a way. It's like an extra 292 damage early to mid game. So I mean, yeah. Post six is where I want to say it does get kind of more favorable, but um yeah, if you miss your shark, you're just doomed. So it's all on that shark. And she's always gonna be shoving towards you. So that means it's gonna be hard for you to roam. And honestly, yeah. Diana side laning's better, but business skirmishing is better. So those 2v2 situations early game, especially. If you pair yourself up with Lee Sin, Graves, Elise, Rek'Sai, all these ganking oriented junglers, you should be able to win them. Um, if Diana has those junglers and you have like a Karthus, that's actually pretty rough. But, I mean, I, I will say this lane is winnable. Winnable. And if you are going to use E pre-6, use your E after her shield W expires. Since, um, if it doesn't expire, you're just wasting your E. Because you have to get through that shield. Because, yeah, it's just, you're just wasting it. Anyways, Draven's not popular. Echo lane. Basically, you start W. Echo has either wave clear on you. He just Echo will always lose uh 1v1. Because basically he has to land both portions of his Q and auto attack to activate his passive. If you E his Q, he can't activate his passive as quickly. So mini traits you just hard win and you out prowl him early on. So basically, level one, you start W to thin out the wave and try to look for prio. Echo level one, if you start E especially. If he cues the wave and then uh what's it called he just afk cues the wave hands off tries to cue the wave play for prio because that's what he has on you he has a lot of wave clear um he can't do that if you start w if he steps up jab him with w walk back and then just start thinning out the wave it should be either be even or shoving towards him when you're level two when you hit level two at the same time do not just e flop onto him he will e your e he will e your e be more strategic about it so uh, level two yeah you have to be really careful with how you use your e if he is level two also level three you always lead off with your q q auto w combo and his last portion of his q when it's coming back that's going to hit you you're going to actually use your e um yeah and when you e you want to make sure you plop down so that way you can walk away and that slow will stop him from re-engaging back onto you for that last auto proc Post six, you have to burn his uh, ulti sooner or later. And level six, especially, you're gonna be able to gain a lead, whether that's a uh, recall tempo on the map, or you're actually gonna be able to solo kill him pre six, which happens quite often if you play it correctly. But uh, level six, right? This is where people struggle because he has his R for when you are. You have to burn his R if you want to solo kill him, at least if you're even, right? So. Basically, there's two ways to do this. Fizz can actually kill Echo through his ult, but you have to have your E. You have to have your E. Basically, you're going to shark him at mid to max range. He could E your ulti, so you have to be really careful about that. Mid range sharks if he has his E, and that's kind of playing it risky since far range sharks he's just gonna e away you're gonna obviously every time he uses the q on the wave there's two things he has to choose between it's either queuing the wave or queuing you if you're kind of standing to the side of the wave he either has to make a choice it's either he has no wave clear he has wave clear but he has no way to fight you that's like the trade-off he has to make and it's all in your positioning there you if you're getting hit with his q and he's hitting the wave you're just you're, you're doomed you're doomed you're doomed he's just gonna beat you in damage and he's gonna beat you in wave clear and have prio so anyways if he's going for a minion if he's trying to cue the wave that's where you're gonna fight him he's gonna either cue the wave or try to cue you in which you're gonna win since if he does cue you you're gonna fight him as assassin versus assassin in which you're gonna still win since you're gonna e his last portion of his q so in in turn you should deal more damage if he cues the wave you're just auto you auto win since 
his Q won't be at his disposal for him to fight you with. You win trades. You hard win trades like that, right? So you're going to have Pryo in lane to influence 2v2 fights or shove and roam. Now, if you're trying to solo kill him one-on-one, -on -one, basically what you're going to do is you're going to R him, WQ. Now, this is where he's going to W, and then he's going to try to time... He's going to try to time your... Uh, what's it called? He's going to... Okay, so if he Ws, if he has all his abilities up and you're just going for an all-in... He's going to try to W and then R, which will rewind him and give him a shield in which after that, now you can look for a solo kill because uh, now he has no ults or W. Like Now you're on even playing grounds. No ult versus no ult. If he's like half HP or three fourths HP or you're ahead, like super far ahead, R him, W, Q, and before he ults, ignite him. So that way, when he ults, he won't heal as much. And after that, you can follow that up with E and then try to all in him from there. Um, so he is all inable, but you need your ignite most of the time. Yeah, if you don't have your ignite and you have your ult, you can use you could most of the times your R is going to be on a lower cooldown because you go lucidity boots into codex or lost chapter. So you can actually trade R for R, but just try to solo kill him just in general like that or you could just opt to shove in Rome since you're just gonna have uh prio most of the time and you if you can't solo kill him find another lane to solo kill or uh, jungle pressure just try to find other favorable situations if you can't solo kill him 1v1 but you can have prio within the lane um yeah that's the echo lane it's pretty uh pretty crazy indeed fizz versus fizz the better fizz wins you already know guys i said this like last year too it was within the year. Galio Lane um, is one of Fizz's direct counters, actually. I think it's actually just, yeah, a counter. With this new Galio setup that they're doing, which is Predator, and it's all for influencing the map over playing for the 1v1. If he does that, the lane is actually winnable, by the way. Because Galio naturally shoves in the wave. He can't freeze it. After he uses his Q on the wave or passive auto, that's your chance to trade on him. After he uses his passive auto and Q, he has nothing remaining. He is just a, like a, a just a sitting duck. Nothing. His cooldowns are semi long too early game. So when you Q onto him, auto W, he's going to try to W. You're going to E mid W, mid of his W, right? Or if he W and then taunts, you're just going to get unstunned right away. So if he's bad, what he'll do is he'll taunt right away and then try to E you. The taunt, if it's only like one duration of the w is going to be one second stun if he e's you're going to e flop on top of him auto w auto 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 q chase him down the long lane it's an easy kill there that's if he misses his e after he uses his w for too short of a duration now the good galio players what they do is they'll fully use the radius of the circle of their w it'll guarantee taunt you and if you e it'll tank the damage but guess what you're gonna tank the damage and then you're going to flop down and you're going to try to stand in front of where he's going to try to E. Because once Galio has no W, Q, and passive auto attack, this is where you just want to all in him and fight him. Because he has nothing remaining. And this goes true for Aftershock. Aftershock makes it harder for you to actually solo kill him. But it is doable within the early game. And there's just a lot of kill pressure you have on Galio. He does outscale you though, by the way. Um, even if he just goes Everfrost, he'll still tank your damage with his W. So you just have to be very mindful of that but the reason why galio is a counter is because his r follows your roams he's a direct counter to you in the aspect of when you're an assassin and want to dive in he cc chains you and you die um just all around the mid game is hard to play around but but that's if you're even or behind on fist if you're ahead and galio's behind galio holding the weight is like the weakest champion on the team it's all within the laning phase and the first 10 minutes of the game that's where it really does matter against galio i want to say though it is very much so winnable um yeah it's very much so winnable you just have to play it correctly and you're gonna have corrupting potion compared to his d ring which means short trading no you don't want to short trade against galio it's only these long trades you want to take long trades 
Q auto W E flop down auto 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 type type deal. All right. You don't want to just. What is it? You never want to start trades with your E. You don't want to double flop E auto W and then Q out. That's the worst thing you can do because he'll just W that damage and then trade back onto you. So that's the Galio lane and you never want to roam. If Gal, if you know Galio's ult will stop you from roaming is, is kind of a given, but you pe people just lose track of that. You have to solo kill him or uh, find yourself really good roaming situations. All right. Anyways, the, I'm trying to go in depth on the lanes where you play against a lot, but if you don't play against them a lot, it just is what it is. Um, Garen lane, it's common counter pick towards Fizz. Basically, he stat checks you. You can't E his Q since that's an auto attack. Basically, he'll beat you 1v1, especially if he rushes MR or just Numbifying Orb. Or not Numbifying Orb, but Mantle. Null Mantle. You just have to give pressure, honestly. But his mid game is going to be weaker, and your team fighting will most likely be stronger, assuming you didn't get destroyed within the lane. He doesn't have mobility, which means if you do get ganked, obviously he's going to die. And I mean, yeah, it's just playing for more favorable situations than just that 1v1 because that 1v1 is uh pretty doomed honestly and it doesn't take a lot for garen to win but it just makes team comps a lot weaker if you have garen on your team so it's it's a lot more of a burden if he doesn't get a killer lead early on if he goes even in lane just consider that worth it if you're fizz anyways and uh when you do win trades is if he ease the wave try to trade him if he ease the wave or he cues a minion basically that's when you want to trade him anyways uh gragas is a complete it's like a a counter in itself because he out tanks your damage and he counter engages your engaged q um typically it's going to be dodging cues as a way to avoid harass and if you're going to engage i recommend engaging with your e if he's shoving towards you within the lane, do not do this under tower. What if you Q or E him, he's gonna follow that up with E. E him after he uses his passive Q on oh, I'm getting lightheaded. I've been talking too much. I'm teaching them how to win against Fizz. Or how to win every matchup as Fizz. And I'm teaching them well. All right. How to win every matchup as Fizz. Yeah. I'll do a good job for you too. Ugh. All right. Anyways. <clears throat> so you want to wait until he uses his Q. On to the wave because it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna make his passive run so he's gonna get his natural hp and that's your moment to e engage onto him he's gonna follow that up with e but he's a lot more tradable q back onto him auto w and then maybe chase him down the long lane typically he stat checks you which means you'll need a gank but it's mainly going to be 2v2s and team fights i'd uh really review and as for his R, if you could E his R, obviously that's a given that it would help you out a lot. And uh, yes, yeah, post six is going to be mid range sharking him, engaging with Q, auto W, and saving your E for when he R's. Since if he R's, that's usually like the game changer. He could knock you in under tower or knock you away. All right, anyways, but Dragus. I never see him up until like Diamond Plus. I just never see him, if I'm being honest. So I I wouldn't worry about him, but yeah. Graves, uh, he doesn't really rush Hex Drinker, but he'll just AFK shove in, uh, shove in mid. That's his whole play style, his whole theme. He goes Immortal Shield Ball or Ghost Blade first. I think he doesn't go Immortal, he almost first. He goes Immortal Shield Ball, right? And then Bloodthirster. Typically, he'll AFK shove and push, which means he's prone to ganks, but uh especially pre 
life steal. He's very much so tradable. He'll shove you in. Obviously, the wave will crash. You'll try to farm that to the best of your abilities and dodge his harass. But if you can get into trading range, he is very much so tradable. And post six, he's very much so all inable. He has his E, so it's kind of repetitive, but you have to get mid range sharks or E R him at tricky spots where he just won't E away. Um, typically, he takes ignite. Sometimes they take teleport. I barely see them take exhaust or barrier. But if he does take exhaust, that's going to be quite a pain. You actually might need jungle pressure. Exhaust is a quite good way to negate Fizz's damage. And uh, short bursty trades is hard to do once Graves gets life steal, since he uh, he gets sustain. So if you short burst trade him, guess what? If you E auto W him and then Q back out, he'll just heal and sustain it all back up. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah, all inning him. As soon as he gets life steal, it's an essential. You can't just mini trade him because of that uh, that life steal he gets. Or short burst trading him. As soon as your cooldowns come back up, you're all inning him just like that. But typically, yeah, he's just going to shove you in. And there's going to be moments where you could shine. Where uh, he's actually fightable within the laning phase. And when he's trying to push in the wave, he's autoing you over the minion. So you could actually try to Q engage on top of him. If you E engage, he'll just E away and then turn. It will be a pain, but uh, that is that. Where was I? Graves, who is next? Heimer, Dinger, actual lane. Oh, it's kind of a pain. You'd never see him up mostly in low elo, but how he should be playing the lane is if you Q or E in, what he's going to do is he's going to drop his E and then... Uh, What's called he's gonna drop his e and then try to focus you with rockets and his turrets right if you have a gank jungler this is probably going to be a pretty easy lane to deal with if you have a farm oriented jungler i could imagine this would be a nightmare he's gonna afk shove you in he's gonna afk shove you in and uh the whole premise behind it is the afk shoves you in and you're gonna have these moments to shine whether that's one of his turrets died and he can't focus you at full force, you're going to Q, QW onto him. Go for a mini trade. He's going to start during ring. You're going to start corrupting potion. You're going to Q, QW him. Q auto W if he doesn't E you as soon as you Q. But if he's good and he E's you as soon as you Q, you're going to W Q him. Take the damage. Maybe E him. Hit him with the AOE radius and try to back away, right? Hit him with a mini trade. Heal that all up with your two corrupting potions you have. And the next trade after that, you're going to look to all in him. If he takes Ignite Flash, it's going to be a lot more doable. Or Barrier Flash, these type of summoner spells. If he takes Barrier Exhaust or Ignite Exhaust, something along the lines of that, it's going to be a lot more painful in which you do need your jungler since, again, Heimerdinger has no Flash. Pulse 6, if you Max Range Shark him, it's going to knock all all his turrets away from him in which he is isolated and you could focus him really easily he doesn't get stopwatch up until the mid game which means he is killable within the laning phase but you need to land that shark and it needs to be mid to max range uh it's pretty easy to do so since he has no mobility too um as for the irelia lane typically with her passive she'll get the shove off level one or she should at least and it should crash under your tower but it's going to be that post level three. It's either she slow pushes it, she stacks a big wave, and then crashes it under your tower. And it's going to basically the towers, uh, what's called the waves are going to stack. It's going to crash into your tower. You're going to hit level three first, in which you could take a really good trade. If she's slow pushing it that slow. But realistically, what happens because Irelia has her passive, she wants to. Q minions, which means it will fast push towards your tower. You'll be level two, level two. Look for a mini trade, whether that's with your, oh, uh, what's called? Oof. It's going to be auto W to get her bone plating out, whatever that may be. It depends on how she plays the lane and what she's trying to do. If she has a big wave and four stacks, obviously you want to back away. 
But yeah, it's all on the level three. You can look for a, a slight mini trade level two and try to E her E. But it's going to crash under tower. You're going to hit level three. And then after that, it should be very much so winnable. Assuming both of you have ignite flash, even then. Even if she, ta if she takes teleport flash, it's definitely a win since that's summoner spell advantage. But it's going to be Q auto W, auto, auto, auto. And then you're going to have to E her E. And it's pretty self-explanatory from there, at least early on. She'll rush, she'll rush either Merc Treads or Wits End. So it's kind of like uh, a timer. Because once she finishes those items, then she's not burstable. And she'll probably Q to back minions to hit four stacks and then all in you. So it's getting that big lead before she's able to build uh, those defensive style items. As for the cast in lane, this is actually the champion I promo ban as of right now because Kasten is just not balanced with the new uh, crown of the shattered queens. But... Where Fizz la where Fizz's strength lies is within the early game, where Cast is kind of weak. Cast then also got a W nerf, I believe. It was W towards his damage. So, oh, and on top of that, he got his Q Magic Shield nerfed, which means he's very much so killable early on. You could play for shove if he plays more on the passive side of things. Hit level two first, and then look for mini trades there. But realistically speaking. Uh, if he plays for shove, you just kind of have to respect it. Hit level three and then look for those extended trades. Again, it's all in that early game since once he finishes Crown of the Shattered Queens, there's basically no way you're going to beat him. But in that laning phase, in that isolated 1v1, especially post first reback, you're going to be able to freeze the lane on him or shove the lane on him, half prial, and then influence those scuttle crab fights or afk roam post six it literally takes cast in 15 minutes or so to scale and get his item so i mean it's literally how proactive you can be before cast in out scales you and uh solo killing him within the lane freezing the lane or just roaming you have all those options and you just have to uh what's it called take them as for the katarina lane i mean it's very much so pretty easy matchup since you could e whatever katarina's most important thing is whether that's her ult or q if she's going ap cat it's pretty much easy it's an easy lane ad cat's probably harder to deal with since it's more on the tankier side of things compared to ap but uh within the lane there's two ways to play the lane it's either you let her shove you in you hit level three and then start looking to trade or you start autoing the wave level one you try to e the wave and hit cat at the same time slow push it and then tower die for at level three level four either way works again it's all in your preference and how you view the champ what jungler they have who might gank you at level two if you're shoving up all this stuff is uh, a factor indeed but assuming you go for the route where she shoves you in and post three you look to fight her on the bounce wave back it's literally q auto w auto auto and then you're just going to eat her daggers and then hard win but if she's playing really passively she'll let you have the prior within the lane you'll shove and when you shove you have all the prior which means you kind of do what she wanted to do which is influence side lane fights or uh scuttlecraft fights roam and such she takes tp ignite that means she'll want to tp when you roam to try to counteract that so in turn you'll have to solo kill her but she's actually pretty easy to solo kill even with bone plating all it takes is a mini short trade into all in it's all on landing your shark and you have to make sure that she can't e your shark or she uses your e her e on you and just fake out the way you try to shark basically that's all i'm trying to say but honestly this is a pretty easy lane save your e for when she r's or you can use your e but you have to have your zonias some way to dodge her ulti as for the kill lane, kills the champ basically. Again, one of these timer champs. You beat early on, but uh, she outscales you. Basic premise of Kale is levels one to three, she'll actually beat you since she has lethal tempo and a lot of attack speed. Compared to your weak abilities, it, it won't deal enough. 
So it's probably just going to be you getting shoved in and on the bounce wave out to her. That's when you want to trade. You just hard win these trades again. You, you can either start off with your E, double Eing onto her, auto Wing, or lead off with your Q, auto W, E. It just depends on what situation you're in. But kill legit needs items. You influence the map through roams. You influence the map through winning scuttle fights. I mean, everything. You just win. At least up until level 11 or up until kill, get, kill hits her uh, first item. So just be as proactive as possible. Roam and win. I mean, yeah. And level 6, her R has like a 140 second cooldown. Your R has around 80 second cooldown considering that you have at least 10% ability haste. And you could R and when your R comes back up, it'll be before her R comes up. So... Yeah, she's even killable within the lane, but it's literally a game of just don't get outskilled. And uh, punishing, yeah. Cannon lane's kind of a pain, basically. He's just, yeah, lane bully, shoves you in. But you do win trades. So what he tries to do is he tries to stun you before he runs away with his E. So you have to go for short bursty trades where you start off with your E. And then auto wq out he's very much so all inable you have to get mid-range sharks since he has his e he's prone to getting jungle ganks since he's going to be shoved up with no actual dash he has movement speed but with a little bit of hard cc he's very much so gankable and yeah if you get mid-range sharks on him he should be dead but honestly you don't play against him much so i wouldn't worry too much about that lane leblanc is actually a soft counter to Fizz since she has a lot of mobility to negate Fizz's damage, whether that's dodging his Q, dodging his Shark, dodging his E. It's playing around her mobility. You're probably going to have to WQ. Q auto Wing is kind of hard since she's going to chain you and then walk away, which is probably going to be enough, or chain you and then W away if you're trying to use your E. If you do get mid you're not going to get max range sharks not on this champ unless she uses her w in lane already but she's going to have two gap closers you're going to get mid range sharks and probably all in her especially if she starts corrupting potions she's very much so all inable and tower diveable it's just all i'm playing around her mobility but you have to get shoved in and then hit level three before you're able to do something if she's playing the lane really slow you might be able to if somehow you're able to play for level two first Flop onto her, auto W, and then play for control there. But realistically speaking, is they're just going to shove you in. They're going to try to auto you and shove you in. You're going to hit level 3, then you can do something. If you can E her E, that's going to be the most ideal situation since that's her main source of CC to shut you down. The Lissandra lane. Typically, how this lane plays out is she's going to shove you in. Crash you under tower. You're going to hit level 3. As long as you're higher, not higher HP, but even or higher HP. As long as you... Oh, oof. Okay, so basically, she is killable within the laning phase since you're an assassin who outtrades her early on. But she has her E to escape. Basically, your goal is to dish out as much damage possible before she E's out. And her E has a longer cooldown than your Q, obviously. So she, you Q in, auto W, and she E's out. You'll have the mobility to re-engage before her uh, disengages up. So it's all about engaging, whether she goes for a minion or tries to harass you for going for a minion. And the lane really starts after you just get shoved in and crashed under tower because there's no way you can play for Pryo against this champ. You have to just get shoved in because her Q does AoE. Post 6, you have to ignite when she ignites. Or you have to ignite when she ults herself. If she ults you... Nah, she shouldn't be able to ult you. Because if you get the engage off first with your ulti, you want to ult, WQ, ignite her. Your shark will go off. But you'll have your E for when her ult runs out. And then you'll both not have ult. But she'll be at like half HP, so she's tower diveable. As long as you have electrocute. 
but yeah other than that i mean again it's you can play for the 2v2s or roams typically speaking if you're trading correctly against lissandra lucian lane's kind of the same as corky it depends on if he takes ignite teleports or exhaust but it just depends on how good the lucian player is if lucian is really really good you have to literally play for jungle assistance but realistically speaking you're going to get missteps you're going to be able to get into q range e range and good lucian players they e away from that ability and you're doomed but bad lucian players they're going to get hit by it you're actually going to get mid to long range sharks and if you want to land your shark on lucian or quirky the best bet is probably to q r animation cancel that's going to be how you win that lane and yeah it's just that's that lux actually became a pretty popular mid laner and i mean is literally a standard mage lane <clears throat> i will say ah. man pre level uh what is it pre level six i mean she's pretty weak especially if she doesn't have a lot of ap so if she's slow pushing the wave and you hit level two at the same time going for mini trades is actually pretty doable if she's fast pushing the wave wait until you turn level three try to be tricky with how you farm you should be able to get into q or e range so you can actually trade her if she's backing away completely like super far back zone her from the minions stack waves crash it go to scuttle or try to roam you always have the option to do that post six mid to max range sharks is key since again she has no mobility and overall you should be having control within the lane i mean it's a typical mage lane which it's all dependent on how well you dodge their abilities and it's really just landing that one ability of yours which is your shark Where are we malzara lane is a control mage so basically you win early on if you're actually able to get into lane Especially pre-6, you can actually freeze on him since you'll have the wave kind of like frozen up. You can get ganked. He's afraid of getting ganked since he has no mobility. But if you're actually able to get into engage range, uh, you just hard win. Especially pre-6. I mean, without a doubt, Malzahar can't do anything up until he has like lost chapter and ulti. So, he can't even get into E range if you're doing it correctly and you should be able to zone him from waves completely. If he's like, if realistically speaking, if he's actually, if he's actually slow pushing the wave, which tech typically he doesn't do, he just fast pushes because of how his E works. Then you just, again, it's like a mage. You play for level two again, double flop onto him, auto W at level two, have wave control, crash it. You'll have vision control, half pile for scuttle crab. And I mean, you're good there. If he fast pushes it, wait for you to hit level two for mini trades, level three for long trades. And I mean, ideally pre level six is you can freeze on him post level six. You can all in him pretty easily with your shark. But if he's playing all the way back and just farming at his tower, that just gives you free room to roam. I mean, again, yeah. Malzara lane's pretty, pretty simple in my opinion, but you just, you actually have to get into range. You can't just like take free damage and let him wave clear. You have to just limit test and always fight. Nico lanes one of those lanes, especially if she's 80 on hit. It's kind of like Twisted Fate. Uh, very much so. You kind of struggle if you can't one shot burst her since she deals a lot of consistent auto attack damage. Uh, she's AP. Mid Q animation, she'll W or try to E you. So it's literally just after that what you do with that so if she's doing that you actually might have to start engaging with your e she'll obviously crash you under tower which is how the lane should go you'll hit level three you'll probably have to lead off with your e over q since there's just too many ways for her to counter you if you just lead off with q and then 100 to zero her and save your e for when she r's that's kind of like the go-to here but i mean typical mage lane again it's 
kind of niche since no one really plays Nico like that. And uh, same thing goes for Nocturne. Nocturne and Pantheon. Okay, I'll just kind of consider them together. The Oriana lane. They nerfed her early game EMR. So she's uh, a lot more one-shottable. At least early on since she won't have as much resistance. Standard mage lane. If you can play for Pryo, I mean, go for it. But realistically speaking, she should be able to harass you. And then half Pryo early on. She's prone to getting ganked. It's at level 3 where you want to engage with your Q. Make sure the wave states are good. But typically, if you lead off with your Q, auto W, E. Even through her phase rush, you should be able to chase her down the long lane. And when her phase rush is down, that's when you want to engage even more since she has no way of escaping you. If she starts corrupting potions, she's actually really prone to getting all in since she doesn't have a lot of HP or MR. If she starts D-ring, you win. When it comes to shorter trading post 6, you can mid shark her pretty easily if her Q isn't on her like a shield since if she can't W herself, she won't have movement speed to dodge your ulti. She'll usually take exhausted barrier. If she takes teleport, she's super easy to one shot and kill. I mean, yeah, it's pretty standard from there. I mean, it used to be a hard matchup. Now I want to say it's just medium. It's not even that difficult compared to others, at least. So, yeah, that's the Ori lane. In a nutshell, haha. Uh -huh. Who's next? Pantheon? Oh, yeah, Pantheon. Basically, he counters everything you want to do, whether that's short trading since he has his E to counter your E. Or long trading since he has conquer and can do two rotations of his passive. Now, basically, the whole premise of this lane is you're going to get shoved in, obviously. No matter what, you have to get shoved in. You're not going to beat him pre-level 3. You're just not. You're not. So you're going to get shoved in, hit level 3. And you, if you want to win this lane like a miracle, you have to E whatever his most important uh, spell is. Whatever his passive has four stacks. If he Ws, it's a waste since it doesn't deal a lot of damage. And you can just all in him from there. But if he Qs, you have to E that Q. And if he... Uh, yeah, it's literally that. He wants... To, how Pantheon wins this lane is by getting his empowered Q on you. That's what deals the damage. If you E it, it negates a lot of his damage and makes the lane actually winnable. You want to trade kind of long and extended if you dodge his Q. But you don't want to trade too long to the point where his abilities are coming back up and he can use them again with full rotation along with his conqueror so it's like it's gonna be like e to dodge his empowered q flop down auto w auto 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 and then as soon as his cooldowns come back up you have to get a good feel for that you're gonna q away that's like how to win that there and if you do that correctly he's probably all inable by then because if you do that trade, he's going to be around 1 fourth HP compared to your 3 fourths from getting hit with his W and E. But yeah, it's just a pain because he just, he stat checks you and beats you 1v1. Basically, Pantheon 2, post level 6, he can match your roams with his ulti. I mean, overall, yeah. He just destroys Fizz and whatever he's good at. That's like the whole point of Pantheon is just like the direct counter to these melee assassins. Uh, Pike lane's pretty niche. You don't play against them often, but when you do, most of the times you have to get shoved in since if you engage onto him, he'll E and then uh, if you if you engage level one, if you E level one, he'll E and then Hail of Blades three proc you. So that's a pain there. Let him shove you in. Long trade with your Q, and then uh, don't E. Since he'll E away from your E, or if you do E, he'll wait for you to flop, time his E, and then combo you up and turn all in. So, I mean, it's all in these short bursty trades, and it's saving your E for when he either Qs or E's. One of the two. And I mean, I'm, I, this, this lane is actually pretty winnable. He usually doesn't even win 1v1, but he wins through roams. That's how this lane usually plays out anyways. You just win 1v1. As for the Kiana lane. This one's a tricky one. It's like. Ideally it is a counter. But against good Kianas. Which. 
you can't really find up until like high diamond plus uh yeah they make it hard to trade because they have their grass elemental and as soon as you e they'll q w reset q and it, it, it's just you know it's pain from there but typically speaking kiana is very much so burstable and all inable because she starts longsword refillable or longsword three potions whatever she chooses it's usually longsword refillable so because she has no hp from like a duran blade or dark seal duran ring if you shark her at level six she's probably dead since you could eat her ulti really easily too and uh 1v1 it should actually be semi easy win Early on, you have to not get cheese first blood since, especially pre-level three. It's more like pre-level, what's it? More like pre-level, it's pre-level six, but it's pre-first back since Kiana typically beats you in base damage. If we're talking about uh, within the laning phase, but after you get that Dark Seal Duran ring, you can actually take these bursty trades and then try to look to all in after that. As for the rise lane, it's a pretty standard mage lane. He's mid, he's like a mid range mage. So typically you're gonna be within range. It's actually one of Fizz's like, one of Fizz's counters, not hardest counter, but one of Fizz's counters since if he lands his abilities, he tends to stat check you, out wave clear you. And as he wave clears, he'll hit you so it makes you hard it makes it hard to even try to farm but rises uh tankiness is kind of his issue even though he goes everfrost or crown of the shattered queens he's very much so all inable at level six and he takes tp most of the times if he takes exhaust or barrier that kind of limits him since the buys he wants to do early on but i mean if he does that then He's prone to getting ganked since he shoves up and has no mobility. So, I mean, yeah, that's that. It's getting shoved in, hitting level three, and then doing the trades I talked about before. Pretty standard stuff. The Silas lane. Uh, well, it's kind of a tricky one. There's two ways to play the lane. It's either you let him slow push. You hit. You let him slow push. He's going to crash under the tower, and you're going to trade him at level three. Or you start W. Could even be E. You play for the wave. And then you're going to have Pryo within the lane. But you're going to crash it. He's going to hit level 3 first. That's the issue. And then bounce the wave back out to you. Yeah, it's kind of like... Those are like the two play styles. I typically just get shoved in against Silas. Since... Uh, what's it called? It puts you in a better spot at level 3. When he crashes you in and then you can bounce the wave back out. You'll have pressure to push out to fight for that Scuttle Crab. If they're fighting over that. It's kind of season 12 so Scuttle Crab's a joke. But it gives you a lot of training room knowing that he crashed it under your tower. So yeah, typically you're just going to let him slow push it, crash it under your tower. Lead off with a Q. Q auto W. And if you do short bursty trace, typically you'll lose since he'll out sustain your stuff with this w at least early on so if you want to look for all ins it's going to be with ignite you're gonna to have to q auto w or auto w q and land the portion of your e at the same time dodge his e his e is going to be like his sauce and is what is going to stack his conquer and win him trades especially it's going to be cc which will align his q and just it's all on landing it's all on dodging that second portion of his E. That's like uh, an essential. If you do that, you're just going to hard win these trades. Especially with Ignite. And I mean, later on, he does outscale you. But just don't let him outscale you. Am I right? That's literally the Silas lane. It is a pain one. Because uh, the sustain later on. Because once he builds Everfrost, Crown of the Shattered Queens. With Lucidity Boots. Those two pair is... Uh, or he could use W twice within a trade and then out trade you. But you shouldn't be able to have Pryo and control up until there. Tindra. Pretty standard mage lane. It's literally what I talked about before. <laughs> I mean, it literally just go back to the luck section. Oh, no. 
It's literally Syndra, you get crashed in, level three, you win the trades. You either lead off with your E, auto W, or you can lead off with your Q if possible. You don't really want to lead off with your Q, since if you do, Syndra will just E you away and then, yeah, you just have no pressure after that. So it's probably just best you lead off with your E, auto W, and then Q back out. Post level six, just all in her with your shark and, uh, it's all on your basic skills of dodging her skill shots, her Q, that's her main skill shot. And then landing yours, which is your shark. Literally, just don't get harassed too hard and uh, don't give too much control. She's very much so gankable too, so there's that. But other than that, that is the Syndra lane. As for talent, you beat him throughout the game if he goes lethality. If he goes Gore Drinker, typically you can solo kill him up until he gets Kindle Gem with Iron Spike Whip slash Phage. Gonna be Gore Drinker. Yeah, basically just Gore Drinker is like the stopping point. But up until then, you just hard win trades. The basic premise is obviously he's gonna shove you in since he has a stronger levels one to six pre first back. But. If he W's, basically all you have to do is E his uh, second part of his W so he won't get his passive auto and then you'll win trades after that. Post 6, he's very much so all inable as long as he doesn't have a lot of HP and uh, MR, but he's not going to get MR. He's not going to go merch. It's just, just HP. So it's a fate pretty standard lane, especially if he's going AP. I mean, he's very much so all inable. Typical mage lane. He's a pain because he can win the game without even influencing or without even playing for the 1v1. He'll play for the shove level three onwards. You should be able to win trades, especially if he's AP. All in him pretty easily, tire dive him pretty easily, but nothing can stop his R roams. So if he does R roam, you have to take uh, as many waves and tire playing as possible and just be too far ahead for his impact on the side lanes to mean anything but yeah i mean it's a pretty easy lane it's kind of like a direct counter at least if he goes ap if he goes ad then you have to play it more like the the nico lane where he rushes like witsend and whatnot the vagar lane it's actually pretty easy you can queue onto him as engage basically guaranteed and then just e his e it's pretty easy to win 1v1 and uh yeah the goal here is just not to get outskilled typical mage lane i mean it's pretty standard pretty standard stuff vex lane uh is new champ probably the biggest counter to fizz in my opinion if she plays it well since all she has to do is hold on to her passive bar and as soon as you engage with e or q just she w's you Honestly, you can't even play aggressive whatsoever up until level six and you just have to farm to the best of your abilities unless you get ganked. I'm being honest, like literally. Her auto attacks do a lot. So you actually, unironically, this is the lane where you might need to take whatever your top rune is, whether that's AP, attack speed, or ability haste. In the second row, in the second row take armor and then in the third row take MR. You need both armor and MR since she does deal a lot of both within the lane. So, I mean, it's a pain. Post six, as long as her bar isn't full, she's very much so all inable. And uh, long extended trades post six is what is uh, your win condition. Since it's pretty much impossible to all in Vex, I'm being honest. Especially in the early game where her W shield tanks all your damage. And she's going to be able to stack waves, so it's just impossible. As for the victor lane, pretty standard mage lane, honestly. I mean, yeah. Get crashed under tower, hit level 3. Try to look for trades if he's positioning pretty aggressively. He's prone to ganks. Typical mage stuff, like I mentioned before. Even though he's a hard counter, you know, not hard counter, he's the best S tier champion in season 12 as a mage because of crown of the shattered queens he will outskill you but it's typical mage lane you could probably win 
up until he builds crown of the shattered queens and then that's when it'll become an issue vladimir is depending on what the player is if it's a bad player it's probably pretty easy to win this lane if it's a good player pretty hard reason being is uh it's all in that q bar if vladimir uses that empowered q you can hard trade on the vladimir e vladimir's e or e vladimir's r but primarily <coughs> primarily you're going to be using it for the damage after the pool runs out and i mean all lending vladimir is very much so doable especially early on but vladimir does outscale but um what's it called if vladimir takes electrocute it's going to be a nightmare since 1v1 vladimir will actually win and against good players just harass you 24 7 and never give you the opportunity to go for long trades or short trades since even if it's short trades you'll get out sustained and if it's long trades you'll either run away or respect your damage it's uh based on the vladimir's knowledge of fizz but basically as soon as vladimir uses the empowered cube that's your moment to go in but Again, it's if Vladimir respects the fact that he has no empowered Q and walks away, then the lane's impossible to win. It's literally all on how the Vladimir plays it, and if Vladimir freezes it outside of uh, his tower, especially pre-6, you're pretty doomed. But, I mean, you could probably sneak in a roam or two if you do have the shove. But if he's shoving you in, it's going to be hard to win since... Uh, He's going to be fighting you quite heavily. Prone to ganks, though, if he shoves up. Anyways, on to the Yasuo lane. We're almost done. As for the Yasuo lane, uh, you're going to get shoved in. He's going to crash in on your tower. You're going to hit level 3. You're going to start off with your Q engage. After you pop bone plating, though. you could, it's, more, you, it's more risky to do this when he has bone plating. But if he doesn't have bone plating, it's free low. You're gonna get Yasuo's wind wall off. This is when he crashes it, you're gonna hit level three. If you hit level three first, you could all in him as soon as you have Q. But if you're level three, level three, you're gonna Q, auto W, chase him down the lane. He's gonna try to E through your minion. Just chase him down with the auto attacks, auto attacks, auto attacks. You're saving your E for when he Qs. When he Qs that empowered Q. It could even be the one to charge up his empowered tornado, but, uh. You want to use your E to dodge his tornado. And if you do that, you just hard win the lane. And you could just all in him at level 3, level 4. And uh, if he's playing it slow, all in him. It's going to be trading into all inning him under tower, like level 5. And even if he slow pushes the wave, cheetah recalls, you're still going to be able to beat him at level 3, level 4. It's just the name of the game since he also is the one who outscales you later on into the game same thing goes for yon but in the yon lane if he plays it a bit nah nah if he plays it a bit too passively you can actually play for level two and then slow push it into trying to dive him at level three but realistically speaking yon will try to play for uh prio he'll try to cue the wave as much as possible shove you under tower and level three same same thing applies basically you just win Q engages as long as you E his tornado or W in some instances. No, no, not W. Since it'll get tanked by the shield. E his tornado. And then, I mean, yeah, just pretty easy from there. Just all in. All in him. Since Yon is pretty weak early on, but outscales you. Especially post 6, he's prone to getting one shot bursted. It's once they build a mortal shield bow, that's when you're pretty doomed. Zed lane. Uh, as for the Zed lane, it's pretty tricky since early on you do beat him. You do beat him and burst. He's going to start longsword three potions, which means you can either play this two ways. It's either you start W. Every time he looks for a minion, you jab him with W. And then slow push the wave and then crash it. He's going to hit level, uh, what's it called? Not level, but in theory, you should hit level two first in which you can keep control of the wave. 
anything below level two shuriken so zez levels one to three is extremely weak so if you just stand behind a minion you can actually tank the q and it won't be anything especially when you have corrupting potion uh you can either start w or e either one works for this lane but the whole premise is if he's not playing for shove you can play for shove if he's playing for shove he actually might beat you if he's uh what's it called playing for the wave in which you're just gonna get crashed in and try to all in him at level three since he doesn't have hp from long sword he only has healing from three potions no hp because he didn't buy a Duran blade so he's very much so all inable at level three post six you're gonna save your e for when he ults and pre six you're gonna save her your e for when he w e q's so i mean yeah it's just easy for you to beat him within the lane and if you're even you're actually winning since zed needs to get a lead if he wants to be useful but again you, you probably should be winning this lane just generally speaking post six yeah you have to save your e for your ult for his ult unless you have stopwatch in which you can save stopwatch for the end portion of his ulti you never want to do it when the x is on you since he'll just set up his uh clones to triple shuriken you and yeah, I mean, that's literally the Zed lane. The Ziggs lane, standard mage lane. Covered that before. Zillion lane, pretty easy lane. Pretty much standard mage lane. The only thing you have to factor is his ult, but I mean, you just have full control. He's such a weak champ early on. Zoe lane's kind of tricky because it's all reliant on Zoe's W. If Zoe picks off up exhaust or barrier even everfrost protobell all these things will influence how you play the matchup but zoe is prone to getting all in especially post six if she r's forward r to wherever her wherever she's gonna r back because when she r she goes forward and then dashes to her original spot r there should be an easy all in from there and i mean generally speaking you have to be careful at level three level four because if you use your igniter flash, she'll take them and use them against you. And yeah. It's basically just playing around her W. And if she has no W, that's basically your moments to fight and trade. That's all the matchups covered. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.